The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. So if it's real or fake Golden Greek Taurus The giant goon Dickhoff El Toro The grunt brothers too The wild Samoans Got something crazy They're going They're gonna be going After you, you, you Wrestling tonight Everything is bigger than life Wrestling tonight Rock and roll Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wrestling Tonight. I am your hardcore host, Mad Dog Butch. Joining me as, well, most of the time, anyway, uh, the unofficial fourth Desperado, (laughs) Race Beamer. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. great to be back. And our guest, uh, this is the first guest that we've had in the studio for a while, um, <clears throat> I am glad that we are finally allowed to have guests back in the studio. I don't have to mess with Zoom, but not only that, it is uh, someone that we've known for over 20 years now, mm-hmm. none other than Sean Sisk, a.k.a. Q-Ball, a.k.a. <laughs> the Most Hated Man in Michigan, a.k.a. I could go on and on <laughs> with all the names that we've given you over the years, but uh, all hot. the way from Florida, yes. I should add. Yes. Yeah, you carted your butt all the way up here for this show, yep. huh? Yep. <laughs> Nin- 19 hours just to do this show. Yeah, well, welcome back. <laughs> we, it's we, glad we, to have you back in Lake Orion. Thank you. Yeah, we, we uh, uh, appreciate it, and um, the surroundings are just a little bit different. This isn't exactly the same studio that uh, that uh, that we were at before. But, it's a higher um, class studio. <laughs> it is. Uh, we got... Uh, at least the Acoustic, equipment. I was gonna say, there. at least the equipment here isn't from the '70s, so that's a good thing. There's no eight-track players or six-track players and mini discs. Oh, I'm and sure if else, we so. search, I'm sure if, sure if we search around here long enough, we can find some stuff like that. Yeah, but, Joe Johnson, uh, the producer here, I'm I'm sure he's got a stock of all kinds of technology back there. He's probably got some fog hat eight tracks. <laughs> uh, but uh, hey, fog hat was good, man. <laughs> uh, so um, I don't know if. How much you've watched our show, but uh, we always like to give our guests uh, a little gift. So um, I went into my stash. It, of, it's not face pain, uh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you need it, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, not that. Uh, so I don't know what you have. I don't even know if you currently watch wrestling, but um, no. <laughs> I didn't. I kind of didn't think so. But anyway, uh, just I know that you're traveling right now, so I thought that you could use. I mean, really, who could not use? A gun, a gun club. <laughs> That's awesome. A gun club uh, draws string bag. Uh, so I'm sure you can find something to put in there yeah, can, on your trip. I home. can put some McDonald's food in there around. and throw it at some of these doors, something like that. That works. But so thank the, you. I appreciate it. So the gun, no the gun club, explain to the meatheads out there what that means. Uh, that is, uh, I guess, Billy Gunn. Is it Billy Gunn's kids? Or Yeah, it, it, I think it's Billy Gunn and, and his kids and whatever wrestlers associate i know that much yeah I, I know billy gunn is uh involved and i think his kids or at least eight kids. one of them yeah 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 so um just before we uh before we get into this uh, i just want to mention a few quick things that are related to old school wrestling uh, just today i want to mention a couple of people that uh, passed away recently um just today we found out that mark youngblood uh, of the uh, Youngblood family, uh, also one of the Renegade Warriors, passed away. I think he was only like 55. Really? I didn't hear why. Huh. Um, and then a, a few days ago, uh, Del Wilkes, a.k.a. the mm-hmm. Trooper, a.k.a. the Patriot, passed away. Um, I don't think he was quite 60 yet. Um, also, I think it was today or yesterday, somebody put out, out an update about Terry Funk. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
and uh, that he got put into a direct care facility uh, due to dementia. Yep. Oh, really? But yep. Tommy Dreamer put out something a couple hours ago saying that he actually talked to him on the phone and said that he's still sharp. So yeah, that, uh, so I don't know what's going on. There well, was, it's possibly there, that can come and go. Yeah, you know, well, I'm, that's true. Yeah, yeah, there was something going on, I want to say, at the beginning of the year. They had said something about Terry Funk as well in his health, and it was deteriorating. And, and Terry Funk made, like, a video. Yeah, I Remember, saw it was, that. like, on Twitter or Facebook no, talking about it. send me any yeah. more autographs. I'm <laughs> getting old. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, it was uh, sad hearing that, but you didn't know if he was working or not, you know? Right? No, he no, he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, well, good, good luck to him because I had to go through that with my mom, and it isn't pretty. So. Yeah, yeah I've had a couple uh, grandparents that have had it, too. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Uh, and um, so uh, around, I think it was Father's Day, uh, Paul Orndorff's kid put out a video mm-hmm. of Paul at a home. Um so we got an update a couple days ago, and it, it was horrible to watch. Um, I was questioning the motives myself. You were too. Yeah. Um, but so over the weekend, over the holiday weekend, he had posted an update. Paul was home with him uh, drinking a beer, and it made it sound like everything was good. But then I saw a, a different update today that said that they basically have only given Paul like two weeks to live. Oh, jeez. At this point. And, and – uh, so the son did come out and say that uh, that the reason that he did the video was because he didn't feel that Paul was getting the care that he needed at the the hospital that he was at. So he mm-hmm. was kind of using that as leverage to bring him home. So so huh. he has taken. I, I mean, he so Paul is in the care of his son now. Anyway, but uh, any idea on what he what he had? I, no, I was, wasn't that uh, dementia thing type thing? Because I heard that speculated. Or, or no. but I don't know for sure. Yeah, I. I I remember a lot of people were saying different things having to do with it, but it's okay. Yeah, I I don't remember what it was. If it was to make sure. One of one of my greatest uh, bad guys of all time. He's he's in my top ten of heels easily. You know, and he yeah, I, I think a lot of people forget like how just how hot he was as a heel. Oh, I mean, he's incredible uh, because his career ended somewhat short. Well, when he went to WCW, yeah, they didn't yeah. do they didn't really do anything with him. They, well, they he had the atrophy in his arm right, from the that. That, neck injury. that was pretty much about it. I mean, well, uh, you know, one other thing, uh, Orndorff, how big of how good of a heel he was. He and Hogan still, I believe, have the record for the most fans drawn from a feud, yeah, even really. in, even into today. Yeah, you know, like Austin and whoever, mm-hmm. they probably made yeah. more money. But yeah. as far as putting butts in the seats, yeah, it's Hogan the, and Orndorff. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely a, up there. Um, so. Uh, all right, so, uh, any, so anyway, so now we our, got all the Debbie thoughts, Downer stuff. Out right, of the exactly. Way. So pick us up, Sean. Our, th- our <laughs> thoughts are with their families and, and the wrestlers, uh, but uh, but let's get into the fun. Um, well, hopefully, I mean, you started <laughs> one way. I hope I don't just really derail it. Well, if it's anything like the previous shows we're on, we're headed for uh, oh, more of a Debbie Downer. Oh boy, <laughs> uh, we'll try to keep it positive today. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, are, are you four out of ten so far, right? Is, is that yeah. why we're doing it? Okay. Uh, You're so, lucky the other two aren't here. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, really. I'm waiting to hey. see someone's face go right, right against that. <laughs> yeah. And then well, my face will be at, at, against it by the end of the show. So it's, but we still have the we – do, we do, just to let you know, we still do have the open-door policy here. But uh, I'm not expecting well, that it, to happen. I was going to say – I was going to – well, one – a lot of the times he was supposed to show up on the TV show and he never showed up. Yeah. Remember, if you guys remember yeah, that. Yeah, and we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We're, we're, when we talk about he, we're talking about rock okay. action. Yeah. And, uh, we'll get into hey, the I didn't have Prozac to say it. 316. Yeah, you, you, you right. Right. We'll get into the few. Don't worry. Uh, but my first question for you Uh-oh. is that it's the softball. Don't even worry about <laughs> it. It's uh, the question that we ask everybody that's on here first. And that is uh, what were your first memories of professional wrestling? Um. Going to let me see. Uh, my my aunt, I used to always go over there, and they would find something for me to watch. You know, when you're a little kid, you know, find yeah. something on TV. And they flipped on it was uh, I think it was Superstars of Wrestling or something like that on Channel 50. And every time I went to my aunt's house, my mom, dad, and them, they put me in front of it. Okay. And I was you know interested in it, obviously. And the first event I went to was the big one, WrestleMania three. 
Okay. Oh, that was your first one. That was the first show I went to. Yeah. I mean, I I lived all downhill from there. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I I mean, I I lived, you know, 15 minutes away. I lived in Rochester. My dad, my dad knew the people that worked at the Silverdome because he was a GM worker and he got tickets at literally like the two days before we got tickets, the show. And he surprised me. He's like, Hey, you want, you want to go to that WrestleMania? Okay. Well, here we go. We're going Sunday. Okay. That, I mean that. That's so you were in. Uh, so you're in elementary school at this point. I was in. I was in second so. grade. Okay. When I went to it. So yeah. All right. That's kind of what happened with me because he had gotten tickets early, and then my dad decided he wanted to take me and my cousin and one of my buddies at the last minute. So then mm-hmm. we we kind of got. Were you in the nosebleed section then? I know. Um, I but, know well, we... if, if you remember where the entrance was, we were like yeah. literally. There's, I've got pictures in my Facebook and stuff. We're literally like right as you're, if you're viewing the ring from the entrance way, we're literally right on the right. Okay. So that's we're exact... right above, right there. That's where I was. Like right at the top of the entrance way. Um... Well, well, yeah, I, I was to the right yeah, of the, was... the entrance way. So you had the top of the entrance way, but yeah. then I was kind of off to the right. Huh. A little we were bit. probably, yeah. yeah. We yeah, were probably like, right you know, right I, I still have my tickets, so I can, I can tell you exactly yeah, I where too. I was at. I, I have mine somewhere, too, but I know I was in the notes. Well, well here, let, let, let me ask you this. Do, where you were at, do you remember two guys having, like, a huge fight midway? And, that... and, and the, the reason why I'm asking this is because I don't remember what match it was, but two guys behind me got into an argument. Uh, and next thing I know, there's beer, and there's, like, two rows of fighting behind me. And my hmm. dad was just kind of, like, kind of holding them off so, while we were watching the show. So when so. we used to go to house shows all the time, there was always a wrestler that people would get. It seemed like the fights would always happen during his match. And I want to say it was Ricky Steamboat's. It wasn't Steamboat versus Savage, was it? I thought it was <laughs> Herc versus you know, somebody. I, I don't, I don't at, think it was. He wasn't at WrestleMania. He was Oh, yeah, he was uh, against Billy Jack Haynes. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think I, you I, might be right because I just watched that recently, and it seemed like everybody was distracted oh, really? and looking over. Yeah. Because I vaguely remember that, but I remember one being, like, pretty close. Yeah. What I remember. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it literally was, like, right behind we're, me. We're probably, probably right. We're probably, probably right, right in the same spot. Other. Yeah, or yeah. you were sitting there like, what's going on? My dad's... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, who were some of your favorite wrestlers uh, around that time when you uh, when you first started watching? Well, I'm not going to say Roddy Piper because we all know with that newspaper article I did, and I kind of snapped food on that a long time ago. If you guys remember I don't, that, no, I don't. I, remember. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember that. What's so that? Piper was there's no, nothing wrong. Well, with that. well, no, Piper was. Uh, I, I I don't remember why I liked him. Obviously, Hulk Hogan, um, Brutus the Barber. Yeah. Don't ask me why. It just I. I like them. You know? yeah. It, well, yeah, it was, when you're young like that, yeah. you like all the good guys. Yeah. yeah, you know that, the Killer Bees, Demolition. Okay. Those were the guys that I liked. That yeah. was That's yeah. all I can really think of why. I don't know, because obviously I was a kid, and everyone liked Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Right. So, oh, well, but they're yeah. all, like, good talents, though, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can't deny, I don't care what you say about Hulk Hogan. You say he's a crappy worker or whatever. <laughs> if you were ever in the crowd during that era when he came out. Yeah. The only way you can really explain it is, I mean, there was a definite electricity in the, mm-hmm. in the air. I mean, the crowd just went crazy. Uh, yeah. So we were obviously at WrestleMania 3, but one other one that I should mention that we saw Hulk Hogan at was a uh, house show that they did after WrestleMania 3 at <laughs> Silverdome. Mm-hmm. And the main event was Hogan and Bam Bam Bigelow against Andre and DiBiase. <laughs> and, we, you know, we were playing the heel role in the audience like we always did. I I thought we may not make it out of there, uh, <laughs> uh, along with the other guy. I mean, it was like one. Not only was it one of the loudest crowds that uh, that I've been part of, even though they had like half the arena tarped off. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, it it, yeah. it probably wasn't as loud as WrestleMania three, yeah. but it it seemed like it. And then when you know, and actually, didn't you say Bam Bam Bigelow mentioned that in one of his yeah. shoot interviews that that <laughs> yeah. was like one of the loudest crowds that he yeah, ever... like DiBiase talks about that match too. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that that was the one where I had the big giant Omania sign standing up on the chair, and then I started <laughs> going like up and down the aisle. Well, well what, was it, me. Like, what, what was it that you guys exactly were doing? You thought you weren't going to make it out alive because I mean, we were voting oh, oh, for Andre. Because we were. Oh, because okay, because we you were, were voting for the heel. Oh, okay, and and, I got and you. literally, so we were on the floor, not too far from the ring. Uh-huh. Second like, row. Everybody's like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, you weren't. So uh, you weren't up there. Yeah, you were there. So everyone. Right. Okay. So not only was was he standing on. On a chair at one point with a giant Omania sign, <laughs> yeah. he was like, like you said, he was running up and down the aisle in front of everybody, and it was almost like the wave. Yeah, like, 
People were just like throwing stuff and blah, blah, blah. So then when, I mean, it, it felt like it. I mean, who knows if people were even paying attention to us at this point. But after Andre and, and, and DiBiase lose and the crowd's going crazy, we were like walking up the stairs mm-hmm. and it seemed like yeah, everybody were. was like, you, you know what? Us. You know what you guys Andre should do? Andre gave us the nod too. <laughs> What's that? Andre gave us the nod too. <laughs> yeah, he did. What you guys should do is go on those old Facebook pages yeah and write that and says anyone remember those guy the guy that was running around the ring <laughs> with the sign just to see how yeah. many people were there and how many people remember yeah, yeah. maybe because they always say that you you always someone always leaves a mark on your on, on their life you know yeah, so yeah. that might that might be like just burned into somebody's <laughs> brain like if i ever see that guy Ever in my life. <laughs> it's, a, it's a possibility. Uh, that was my second so. time having heat at the Silver Dome. The other time was when the Pistons played there, and I started strutting. Remember that Larry Bird satin jacket that I have? Yeah, yeah. I, I was strutting up in the upper deck with, with that thing on, and <laughs> it wasn't as bad as the wrestling heat, though. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so did you continue to watch – I mean, because – in in my notes, I mean, I I jump. Yeah, I, I I continued watching wrestling till I, I want to say it was. I want to say I stopped watching right after Flair left WCW and went to the w, WWF for a year. Okay, uh, and that because I had just started watching WCW at that time, and then oh. he flipped over. Okay, um, and I just kind of grew out of it, I guess. Yeah. You know, or I just got bored with it because, right. you know, it started turning cartoony yeah. right there in the 90s. So I think oh, that's yeah. what it was. And then I watched WCW, saw Ric Flair, and then all of a sudden I was like, I'm too old for this. You know, maybe, <laughs> yeah. I, maybe I was like 12 or whatever, but I was like, <laughs> no, not anymore. You know, I, I changed my focus from, you know, you, you get older, so you change your focus. Start from, doing other stuff. From guys running around in underwear to, you know. Yeah. Girls, yeah, I, exactly. I Women running around <laughs> yeah. with no underwear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, from from you know that the guys in the underwear to the girls in the bikinis. So I just kind of switched. You know. It's... So uh, I, I mean, my I'm jumping ahead a little bit here to the origins of your website. But before I ask you okay. that, before I get into that though, right. uh, what did you do anything else involved before NW? No, dot com. No, I didn't. Were you involved? Okay. No, li- literally, all I did is I fell back in the wrestling. How did How did that happen? What What hooked you? Back in the wrestling? Yeah, uh, I was. I don't know if I can do plugs. Not not yeah. plugs, but okay. Well, I, I was. I was all right, I was working at uh, Rams One in Rochester. Yeah, yeah. And the cooks started watching. You know, some of the guys were talking about wrestling, and I'm like, that guy still wrestles. You know, Ric Flair. He still wrestles. Mm-hmm. He's still wrestling until you know what, 2010 or whatever. I'm like, he still wrestles, really? They're like, it's still on TV? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, eh, whatever. <laughs> so I, I was home one day on a Monday, and I flipped on, and there's Nitro. Okay. So I tuned it on, and I'm like, I'm not going to like this. Next thing I know, I'm watching the whole thing. And okay. then it gave me something to you know, talk to the guys that were in their 20s that I'm working with in the kitchen. Yeah. And I just started watching it. And, of course, you know, I saw Bash at the Beach and the whole you know, Hogan Swerve. The Hogan Swerve literally, I think, is what? Help me out. Back is in. what you know. Just watching him do that I was like, no way. Probably did a lot of people. Yeah, you, you know, know. I mean, I was watching them before, and I'm like, I knew who. See, I remember who Razor was, and I remember who Nash was barely. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's from the WCW time because you know their thing. That I, I remember yeah. Razor, but I wasn't really watching it. Wasn't really paying yeah. attention. Okay. Um. But yeah, all of a sudden they're on WCW, and then that whole thing, and I just, you know, I just got attached again. Okay. Yeah, I know. We, we, I mean, we kind of gave you some crap in the beginning about just being total outsiders, marks. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, before we get to that, though, so how did you? <laughs> how did you? Uh, <laughs> so how did you become aware of the Pile Driver Radio Show? Funny story. Okay, so I'm at the autograph signing at Harmony House in Lake Orion, or Lake Orion, as you know Tony Schiavone <laughs> would say all the time. Who's? Uh, it was. Um, I think it was the, um, I think it was the uh, Bobby Heenan and Larry Zabisco one. Okay, really? I think. I think that was. The I one. remember him being there, but I should have. Uh, un- un- unless they unless they it was unless it was Bob I mean, unless it was Bobby the, unless it was Bobby the Brain Heenan and Nitro Girls. It was one of the two. Okay. So I was there for a couple of them. Probably you know, all Goldberg of them. Yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um. So Very I was legend. there. <laughs> so I was there, and I'm I'm waiting. I'm looking in line, and I see this 
S10 white pickup truck with this sign on the back that says pile driver talk radio. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, are you serious? Who would listen to that? <laughs> and I'm like, AM? No. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You, you know, I, I, I'd sit there and think about that, but I saw that. I'm like, can you even hear that here? I'm like, what, what is it? You know, what, what's, what's going on? Right. So, like the following week, I could barely get it in at my house, and I'm like listening, and I'm like, wow, this is actually a thing. Couldn't believe it, you know? <laughs> and that that's how I found out. It's like, I, I oh, okay. you guys were talking, and I'm like, Let's see if they'll actually answer my phone call. See if the, these phone calls are real, you know? <laughs> so I, I called in, and all of a sudden, uh, I, I don't remember if Dwyer was doing that at that time or if the other guy, that tall dude, I can't think of what his name is. Ken, maybe? I, I don't remember what his name was. I mean, we had a few different. I don't, yeah. I mean, it, it was probably it was probably Dwyer at the time. It probably was. I just remember Triple J. That was it. Okay. Oh, that I got Dyer, I got Dyer some was... stories off the air for the, about that dude. I'll just I'll just tell you this. <laughs> yeah, um, I haven't heard but, anything about him in a while. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell okay, you. all right. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's how I found out about the show. And then, like, I was what's funny too is I found out where the radio station was, so I could get a better signal. To listen to it. I'm listening to my car, so I go. Do you guys remember the deli that's that was at the corner yeah. of the radio station? Yeah. I went up there yeah, and yeah. used the payphone. To call. Oh, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> and wow. the, the, the second time I called. He was I, spending money on yeah, us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The second time I went to the the old showcase cinema that was down the street yeah. and called in the second time. Really? Oh, really? So I could, because I could actually hear what was going on yeah. because, it, you know, the signal didn't go out past, you know, the four lane highway, basically. You know, yeah, yeah. Unless you just happen to have enough tinfoil on your radio <laughs> antenna to get the station in. Right. Um, but yeah, that that's how I called into the so, station. So really, you weren't just like happened. I mean, you could have drove, you know, somewhere closer to home and picked up the signal. Well, no, I, I were, couldn't. I couldn't get it from my house in Rochester. Were you so. angling on maybe showing up at the studio? No, uh, no, no. It, I, I seriously, <laughs> no. I seriously, I'm like, I knew how AM stations worked, so I figured yeah, the closer yeah. I get, the better I can actually hear it. <laughs> oh, okay. That that was the whole reason. Because literally, I was like, I'm not going to your radio station because. Yeah, I don't know. You know, you always see the the old movies and stuff about security and stuff. Obviously, it didn't have <laughs> yeah. didn't have security half the time. The, the general manager wasn't even there. But anyways, right. I I just wanted to hear it, get a better signal because I after five o'clock they turned the signal down yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Son, I I couldn't hear it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, oh, that's awesome. A, that's interesting. So um, so originally you were just calling just to just to ask questions or talk. Uh, eventually. It, it, I wanted to hear myself on the radio, just okay. you know, yeah. you know, instead yeah, of calling the like radio station. Else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But eventually, uh, you know, we came to count on you to, to call give in a, to with call something in, stupid. Yeah. Call, well, no, you you used to call in and give us the ratings uh, <laughs> during yeah. during the show. So, um, so you would always do that. Yeah, good at, old at, pet, after yeah. A, a, after listening to Pedal Curly's uh, hotline, yes. Oh, is that? Oh, what is, that it was? is that where you got it? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, half the time, yeah. Okay, I yeah. just figured I, I actually got mind. charged yeah. like the two dollars a minute just to call in on that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's why I love the radio station because I'd use their phone to call in and get it in between the first and this, the first commercial, <laughs> so I didn't have to use up my money on my phone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was research, right? Yep. Radio's got to pay for yep. it. <laughs> okay, so how how did it come about that uh, Rocky actually? Okay, so this. As, as you know, I mean, this is no secret. Yeah. This was kind of a bone of contention with, with us because we felt that John did it, uh, Rocky Action, did it behind our back. Well, not even did it behind our back, but he just didn't consult us. At, at this point, I felt the that, underhanded that, weasel. I, I just <laughs> felt like this, that we were kind of a, a unit. Although, Something's new on that part. No, is... <laughs> although I find out later that he was a little perturbed with us for not contributing to the show but in my mind you guys were when, when I, you guys were on uh, you couldn't talk over him. contributing money to the show oh uh, because, well because <laughs> but i mean i'm like you i'm sure he never asked stone or steel for it for money um so yeah. I, that that thought didn't even cross my mind we, we tried to get him but, sponsors and he didn't take it so so but my question is how did it come about with john did john contact you out of the blue to to start coming on to the show or uh, wow. do, you, do you remember that? I was trying to figure out if you guys would ask me how I got on. To be honest, I honestly don't remember. You know, I, I think I showed up at the station like after a show, or I called in or something, and I 
he told me to just swing by. And I actually, I was like, is this guy legit? And I showed up. Okay. And I think I talked to him before you guys showed up, and then I left. Because uh-huh. I was kind of like, n- not freaked out, but I was like, what? You know, this guy, I think he said something. I was like, hey, I usually get to the studio at this time. Swing by. Maybe we'll, we'll talk. Because I kept calling on, you know, on the show. Okay. I don't remember if he contacted me through email or instant messenger or wh- whatever it was. Well, I, you know what? I do remember that. He might were, have said something on the air, too. You, I, were, I you were pimping a website, and you were saying you got like 55,000 hits a week. And that's what. That's what. Oh yeah. Okay. That's, that's what yeah. made the light bulb go off. Yeah, he wants. Yeah, he wanted the advertisement on on the web page. That's what it was. So, okay. Yeah. Yep. So I don't. I don't know what happened after that. All of a sudden, he just showed up. Right. Yeah. 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 So we never really knew what had happened there. Um, yeah. What I because I remember I was at I was at the I went to the studio before I was ever on, and then the next time, I think what it was is after the whole thing with. Um, if the four horsemen were going to reunite and you guys kept talking about that. The one week I talked about how Goldberg was going to be a member and not Ric Flair. And then the week before I had said it was going to be Ric Flair was going to be the one. And then I remember you, what was it? Beamer, whatever your name is on this thing. I'm sorry. I, I didn't Buddy want to say Rogers. It. Okay. Buddy my Rogers. old name. Okay. Uh, but, but, yeah. Buddy, yeah. I, I, yeah I, okay. That, that, that's, I just didn't want to cross the hairs on that. <laughs> that's why I was like, um, 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 um. <laughs> they both start with a B. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, was that you, you made the comment about, oh, you're, you know, how do you really know this? You're just reading it off the, off the dirt sheets and stuff. So I think what it was is that he, he said something that if, if I was right, for me to come into the studio, or, or he made some comment about you know that I was going to be a part of the show, or that is something, something. I don't remember what yeah, it was. I thought that was when when I said Ric Flair wasn't coming back. Yeah, and I said he was. Yeah, yeah. and you're, yeah. you're like, oh, you're just reading some off the dirt cheap. Da 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 da. <laughs> so after I did that, and I think what it was is he contacted me that Monday or Tuesday. It was either Monday night after Ric Flair showed up, or Tuesday morning, and told me we got it. It was basically to. Get it, you. Yeah. So he told me to show up at the studio, and, and that's, like we had discussed be, before, that, that I don't remember. If, I don't think you were in the studio hmm. that that following. T- I'm not. I, I'm not positive. I've got the tape at home. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I can't. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I don't remember. I'm assuming I, 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 because I, I, I mean, I honestly don't remember a lot of this stuff. I know what I'm, you're talking that's about. What I'm asking, but hoping that yeah, you do. I, I don't I remember. I you might have. You might have been because mm-hmm. all I remember. Actually, now that I think about it, you were. Because I remember he started the show off. He's like, well, buddy, we have a problem here, don't we? And he played the audio. He opened the show with the audio of Ric Flair coming. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, I forgot the fourth horseman. Ric Flair, come on down. Oh, okay. And then he started the show like that. Yeah. All right. I think and, I and automatically, he tried starting heat in the feud between me and me and buddy. Oh, yeah. oh, and no, it's lasted always, until this day. They were, they were always <laughs> trying to get us. Him, him and uh, Frank Williams Jr. were always trying, yeah. to, trying to find somebody. That could uh, top us, in, outsmart us in knowledge or or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, like you said about the website. Now that you said that, I remember that because he was like, "Oh, we, we need we need to be front page yeah. on there, right in the front, on the top, and on the side, and in the back, and every page, and all this other stuff." I forgot the, about that. The NWOW website. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, well, like, what? Uh, I mean, obviously, we're a little bit older than you. What? Yeah. Uh, what did you think? Like being brought on there, were you like intimidated at all? Or I mean. I mean, a lot of people thought, I, I mean, it was cool to be on a radio show, but yeah. you know, it, like you said, it was, it was an AM station, <laughs> little, little tiny station that the signal didn't go out yeah. very far, but, uh, like I said, I, I had to, I had to drive closer so I could hear, you know, but it just seemed like a lot of people that came on kind of thought it was a bigger deal than I know I did. Yeah. It, it, no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it wasn't. <laughs> I'm just saying that some of the people it, that came in there seemed like they thought it, it was. It like, was. We were like almost Howard Stern. When, like when it, you know, obviously <laughs> I, I'm going way forward, but it was. Okay. And, and when I did it, I found out, I didn't really find out because uh, going ahead as well, that I do a podcast and I talked to somebody on one of my podcasts and he told me this, you know, everyone was like trying to get on that show. And I was like, I just thought, like you said, AM <laughs> really? station, whatever. You know, I didn't get the calls that you guys did, but it's because everyone was listening. Yeah, they weren't calling because everything we were sitting, there, you know, saying everything. Yeah, that's kind of true because there was a lot of you know, like the indie wrestlers mm-hmm. that wanted to get on the show. You know, 
We had I mean, we quite did. a few of them on there. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did do that quite often. I mean, it wasn't the but John didn't really care. Had, that, like promoters well, well, and whatever. Yeah, it wasn't like know. the focus of our show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like but I, we did I remember. It every once in a while. Yeah, I remember stating about. Dan Curtis passed and when he's like, "Does anyone care?" And I'm thinking, "Oh," <laughs> and I was like, "Are you like I?" That was the big thing I had to say. And he's he's like he's like, "Does anyone really care?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, there goes everyone on that you know uh, memorial show coming in." Uh, I I mean, well, he didn't know. He probably didn't know who Dan Curtis was. No, really. he, no. I guarantee you, you know? he didn't know. Who no, Dan he didn't. Curtis, so he didn't know no. who like half the the mid card and uh, lower card guys were either. But yeah. uh, no. um, <clears throat> that wasn't his job. <laughs> no, he was he was, was the uh he was the MC. Yeah. Try, trying to be the the Howard Stern of wrestling talk radio. <laughs> is what it was. Uh well, he he used to make the the Howard Stern comments all the time though. He did. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah, know cuz I don't listen I'm more to extre- Stern, this, but... this show is more extreme than Howard Stern. He said that constantly. Yeah, yeah he he used to he used to always say that. I mean, that's how that's well, look how, how big he got Howard the, Stern was that. The Manzilla yeah. King of All Marks uh <laughs> moniker came about too that I gave him. Because, oh, is that from that too? Well, yeah, because you know Howard Stern called himself the King of All Media, so oh, then that's yeah, yeah, so yeah, I started yeah. calling him the King of All Marks. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, but but yeah, go, going back to your, your question, I was, I mean, it was one of my dreams to be on radio, be on TV. Obviously, mm-hmm. I got to do that real early, you know, yeah. right? Basically, you know, two years out of high school, a year and a half out of high school. Yeah, um, I was intrigued as to exactly how it all worked, and just. What would happen on it? You know, I mm. wasn't. I didn't really listen to talk radio at all. You know, the only thing I knew was Howard Stern, like everybody else. You know, mm. so I didn't know what was going to happen. So right. I, I was nervous, but I guess giddy like a schoolgirl. You know, oh, because yeah. I didn't know okay. what. You know, it, it, I thought it was cool. You know that. Yeah. Because in a way, back then, wrestling was kind of you know starting to go up in popularity. Mm-hmm. So being able to actually sit there and talk to other people about wrestling it was different you yeah. know it's like that water cooler talk yeah and but sitting there for an hour you know and, and yeah. being able to talk and express and obviously everybody had different opinions which i thought was awesome and that's probably one of the other reasons why so many people called in because they wanted to yell at somebody's opinion yeah or or, or tell somebody they didn't know what they were talking about <laughs> right yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah true true um <clears throat> hello that was so, the second I, I visited that WPON 1460 in second grade and stood outside the window in the studio and watched. Oh, really? Yeah, and okay. watched. I still got the bumper sticker. Oh, wow. It was like a field trip in elementary <laughs> school. Maybe it, it was probably later in second grade, but I was watching the Crazy Al show. Is that what he was called? <laughs> yeah, Crazy Yeah, he was Al. still yep. doing that show when we were there. Yeah. 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 Wow, Remember watching crazy. that and thinking that was a that was a huge deal, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it, some of the shows there, I, I'd sit there. I'm like, why? But then it's like, well, they're paying the same thing I am. So okay, that, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I, I, I I get it now. Yeah, definitely. Well, we need radio. You know, the sad, th- real quick diversion here. We need radio like that because there's n- no station like that anymore that has all those different types of shows on there. Yeah, you know, right, nothing exactly. even close. Everything's just all oh playlists from this major company playlist from this major company. Yeah. There's like three yeah. of them and yeah. have all the radio stations. Well, well that station now, it got, it got bought out yeah. uh, back in like two, 2006. So now it's like, it's broadcast online and on other stations mm-hmm. and they still have like the same mix of stuff. You know, it's not the same shows, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. It, it, it's still, you know, you go on the So web, it's just online. Cause it's, they're not, it's not on the air. I know that. Yeah. I think it's like on, uh, you know, like let's say, Fourteen sixty point two or whatever, you know the you know the the oh, web, the HD, the, yeah, ones. the HD okay. things and stuff. Yeah, but it's funny you go on there and the prices haven't changed in like twenty something years. <laughs> For real? And I sat there, it, wow. it, and to be honest, I was tempted before I moved to the state of Florida <laughs> of going back there because one, the station manager was no longer there. Yeah, mm-hmm. they wouldn't know of anything that happened when I left. I can get into that later. Well, that's probably a good thing. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> and. and you know, I would have, I would have been like, this would have been a great hurrah and just kind of like a, a, a giant suck it yeah. to the old management yeah. of coming back. <laughs> well, that's that's funny that you mentioned that because I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, and that is actually my next question. Um, so yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys mentioned it. I mean, we were kind of riding high a little bit, especially for a small AM radio station. If you can judge that by the phone calls that we get, I mean, obviously that was a big deal because, I mean, I you felt were getting like ten, fifteen calls. A- 
I mean, the, the phone. I mean, as soon as we started, I yeah. mean, it, it was just. I mean, when we would warn the 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 uh, yeah. the producers that it was going to happen if we had a new producer. And oh, I don't, you're not going to get that many calls. They didn't believe us. They'd be sweating. They couldn't believe how many calls we were getting. Yeah. But uh, but they did base a lot of like how many people listen. That's that, because they didn't have ratings. Yeah. Um, so that is kind of how they, they based it. Um, mm-hmm. so, so we were kind of riding high for a while. Um, and then what kind of, <laughs> what kind of took it down was, uh, and you probably weren't even that involved in this, but we were kind of involved in a little feud with another guy that was on there. Oh, no, uh, I, I've got, I Ron have Cameron. a tape of the show that, um, you called one of you guys called it. I've got it on an old tape. I have to find it. I'll, if I can't, I'll find it for I, you. So, I, so I had, you're asking about the Monday Night Football ratings. That's that's all I remember. What about wrestling and Monday Night Football? It's higher than Monday Night Football. But yeah, I don't think that was, that one was mine. I call maybe, maybe it was. Or no, maybe it was. Maybe it was, it was, probably, it was Prozac. Yeah, I think it was Prozac. Because he okay. called quite a few oh, times. Well, that's the one that. That's the one that we got in trouble. Yes. For. Yep. Okay. So yep. before that, I had yeah. called and asked him a question. He was sputtering and yeah. stuff. So I, I remember so, hearing that because he played it on the air. The one. And, well. I, well Someone Allegedly, did. it's Prozac. <laughs> it's never been proven. <laughs> uh, later on, becoming Frank Williams Jr. Uh, he calls. I just happened to be, it was my day off. I just happened to be going to the bank. I just happened to have it on <laughs> WPON. I just happened to hear his voice talking to Ron Cameron. And he's, and yeah, so he's just talking to him about sports. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's not going to. I was like, this is totally legit. He's not going to do anything. And then at the very end, he's like, oh, yeah, one more thing, Ron, you're an effing fat ass. <laughs> but he didn't say effing. He said the word. And then it was like dead air for a minute, and uh, so I was not. There was no delay. Uh, was, that station had n- no was, delay. There was no delay because it, everything was so decrepit mm. behind the the board. There was no right. like if they did that, they'd have to buy a whole new board, and then the station would have been out of business. <laughs> so that's probably why. So I don't really <laughs> think anything of it. Um, the way my schedule was at the time, I could only do uh, do like a month of, uh, of shows every three mm-hmm. months, unless I took some time off. But um, so. Apparently, when you guys went into the studio that that week, it was uh, you're done. It was just uh, <laughs> well, okay. So did she tell you originally that you were done? I, I she, know. No, no. What, what she said was, and it's not a direct quote, is that me and Prozac couldn't come on the air because she didn't know who did it. <laughs> oh she didn't God. know if it was the, me, if is, it was the new guy, which is hilarious, or if because it was Prozac. It's hilarious because he didn't even try. He didn't even make a. Minute attempt to disguise his voice. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like he sounded exactly, allegedly, mm-hmm. like Prozac, yeah. like Frank Williams Jr. Yeah. He, allegedly, it was him. I remember standing yeah. in the office <laughs> with the, what was it, the station manager. So you were there that day too? Yeah. Okay. I thought, yeah. I thought it was. I, I, I just remember walking, in, <clears throat> walking there and then being told, I don't remember who it was that told me that we weren't allowed on the air because they didn't know who did it. <laughs> okay. They could, if, if we were on the air, the show was done. <laughs> but if we weren't on the show, the show could stay on the air. Like, what? So who was supposed to be on it? So I just, mean, what just, were you guys supposed to do? It was just John and you know, I guess yeah, you we guys. were just doing a regular show, and then oh, it, it, was, it was just you know. me. Yeah, it was just me and him couldn't go on the air for oh. some reason. So I, I I got blacklisted off of radio in like the first month and a half, and I didn't even. But do I anything. thought that that turned into. <laughs> I thought you guys negotiated with her to the point where it changed to the, that. We just couldn't take phone calls anymore. That was that was yeah. later though. Yeah, that that was that was that was after. So if we I went, yeah, because after we, though. if we went back on the air, if we went back in the studio, we couldn't take phone calls. Me yeah. and Prozac could. Yeah, yeah, that that because that that didn't happen, and that part that didn't couple officially weeks. happen yeah. until because John and I were the two left because you guys already started the. Um, yeah, be- yeah. Because show. of that, be- yeah. instead of doing the the, because uh, he used to videotape the radio shows and then distribute to right. you know West Bicycle Hill or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he said instead of doing that, let's do a live show. So well, we did a live show that that followed because it was yeah. right around Thanksgiving because we did the show. I think it was the day before Thanksgiving. Hmm. Okay. In '98. Uh, All right. Well, I got to give credit to Joe Johnson to this part because. He, who is still our producer to this day. He's back still, there still, working uh, hard right he, now. He, before we started, he set everything up for us. But um, so <clears throat> he actually, because when John and I would come to uh, add the the graphics and everything mm-hmm. to to the to the show that he had taken, mm-hmm. um, the studio, the old studio, was just getting a live call in line. Mm-hmm. So he he had pitched the idea for us to start doing a show there the show there mm-hmm. but 
but they just kind of split it, split it off. So, yeah. so that was like a perfect opportunity, really, mm-hmm. since you guys had gotten kicked off WPON well, airwaves. Well, to, well, to well launch, right before that, right, hour right before that too, he, I remember he came in there, and I don't know if he was doing it live or if he was recording. Because I remember he came in with the cameras and he had the the light on that one day. I don't remember oh, if he was doing it. Joe Johnson, you're yeah. saying? Yeah, he, yeah, if, he had if, come it, in. Was, was it live or he was well, taping it to put on there? Well, Joe is a perfectionist, and I think that he That's was really, what it was. <laughs> he was really bothered by right. the low quality of John's <laughs> camera. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And so the, he was, the standalone so he was camera of people's backs, and you can barely see, you know, right. John talking. You the see, like, you and... see my one of the one tape I have is all you see is the six pack logo the whole time. Don't see my face at all. Yeah, like the camera no was room. like right there, and yeah. every once in a while you'll see John's face kind of like pop up. Yeah. So I, I think that's what he was doing. I think that in his mind that he was gonna that we were gonna start doing. A show that way, where mm-hmm. he would just come in and 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 record yeah. it. But uh, well, well, that show too. That the first show. What's funny is that that first show on TV, he passed over the TV show to me, which was weird. John did. Yeah, John or, or did. Rock action. Yeah, rock action. <laughs> yeah, what, what, yeah. He passed the show. I'm saying this is going to be Prozac 316 and Cue Ball show. Right. Because we thought we weren't going to be able to go back on the air. Yeah. And. So he passed that off to me, and then of course, you know, two months later. That, so that's else. that's my next question. So how, so how did it come about? <laughs> oh man, I'm, that, I'm, I'm going to throw somewhere to the bus. Well, how did it come about that? <laughs> oh no, we're, I don't know if we're there yet. I, how did it come about that you ended up taking over the pile driver show? That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm going to throw somewhere to the bus. Okay. Um. So what happened was, oh man, oh well. <laughs> That's why I wait for him to. If he's watching this on Facebook, he's going to come straight through that door after I say this because I am literally going to throw him under the bus because I don't think you guys ever heard this story. Make sure you back the bus up over him, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened was um, he he talked to Marie. He was doing the show. Who's he? Rock, Rock Action. Action. Okay. Doing the show. But he was told he needed to stop, he needed to be at home more. <laughs> he couldn't do the show anymore. So basically, his wife told him it was either us and the kids or the radio show. And then he came to me and asked, hey, do you want to take over the show? I thought he was joking. Okay. But I was like, I like how the show's going. I'm like, I'm a dumb kid. I'm going to take over it. Why not? <laughs> Even though I, I've got a face for radio um, and, a, and a voice for TV. So, you, you know... I, why not? I'll try it. You know, I I didn't know. I kind of knew how to work some of the stuff because I'd seen how John had taken the audio and stuff and and using the the four track players and all that that we were using back then. So I was like, I'll give it a try. You know, I'll I'll go and get some sponsors. Okay. You know, and did you? So you got sponsors right off the bat? Kind of, yeah. Um, I knew his. I never even asked him about his sponsors if they wanted to stay or not. Oh, you know, obviously okay. his business was one of the sponsors if it. Did or didn't pay for it, I don't know. Um, but I saw how much it was, and I'm like, yeah, I should be able to do that. Me being a lowly cook at a, at a restaurant, I'm thinking, that's half of my pay for the year. <laughs> or not the year, but the month. But I was like, okay. Yeah. So I went to a couple places, and uh, it was actually some of the websites that I worked on okay. um, that they actually were, quote, unquote, paying me for it. Mm-hmm. But I never got paid for it. So <laughs> yeah. actually, it came right out of my pocket. <laughs> Well, uh, well, here, hell, I thought that uh, the the reason why we we gave up the ghost on the radio show was because we couldn't take the callers. That, that and you're telling me it was something different. That yeah, that's huh. that was that's why you know I didn't know if you guys had heard that story because it's probably a well, combination of both. It, it, it might have been, but the thing is, is that we were able to take calls, but nobody was calling, and plus he wasn't putting the phone number over the air. Who? John wasn't right. No, when when I was on that show with John, after the fallout yeah. happened with the station, we could not take calls. Yeah. So yeah. That, and, yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's why that, that yeah. is part partially what led led to that. Mm-hmm. Um, he never told me what what you just told us specifically, but over the years, I mean, I knew. So we're breaking news right going, here on wrestling well, tonight. Well, going back, going back. <laughs> well, well, that's what I remember because it was something about his, his you know, his wife because because during that time too. He uh, was doing the ECW merchandise. You guys remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And because of my website, he wanted me to build a merchandise website and wanted to sell the ECW stuff. So he gave me the ECW contact information. So 
that that's what made me laugh all these years later is that he gave me the phone number. I basically talked to Paul Heyman's mother and Paul Heyman. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I remember that. I remember you tell, telling us that. And I didn't yeah. realize that all this yeah. time. I'm sitting here, I'm like, I talked to, you know, I watched the, the Rise and Fall ECW, mm-hmm. and then I realized, I'm like, I was talking to Paul Heyman that whole time, had conversations <laughs> with him, and never even knew. <laughs> really? That's hilarious. Yeah, it, it is. It's just funny. It's like, yeah. didn't realize. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Circling back a, a bit mm-hmm. to, to that, and, and it kind of goes into what I said before about people thinking that our show was bigger than maybe it really was. Um, John Rock Action has mentioned this for years. I don't know if you were at the show. Were you at the show that Jennifer Kennedy, the bodybuilder, was on, and then she she wanted to take her clothes off in the studio. She wanted, no. to, get, she wanted to get nude in the studio. Yeah, no, I wasn't because on that she one either. Because we no. she thought that we were. And at the time, she was attractive. Uh, she still d- has videos out there, and she the, the, she has done this so is many gonna, steroids. This is going to show my, my age or whatnot. Who? I, I, don't, was, I don't even know who it is. Do you remember? Okay, I only know from the radio well, show. John, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Rocky Ashton started doing all the bodybuilding stuff because yeah. he wanted to get into the Great Lakes Fitness Guide. So he was bringing the bodybuilders on. Um, and so she was, like, in the off season. But a- anyway, either way. We're all like, so okay. he was trying to do the Lex well, Luger well, uh, pro thing or whatever from the early yeah. nineties. Yeah. <laughs> so we were all like, okay, get naked, and he's like, he's like, no, he wouldn't, he would not let her do I, it. Because, I do remember he hearing was like, something, he was like, but I, I will get. He's like, I will get divorced. Um, we we just talked to him recently. Um, well, actually, we sent we yeah, and you guys, you. yeah, and and yeah, he he was like, he he did tell us. So he's mentioned it over the years. He did say, you guys have no idea how close I got. To getting divorced over all this stuff, <laughs> uh, he was just like my wife. My wife just hates it, still hates it, whatever. So, so yeah. I mean, we did know that that was a factor in some stuff. I didn't know that that's that why was the, that was the catalyst what, yeah. for him. Yeah, and that that was to me that was what I was basically told. It was like he didn't want to give up the show. Yeah, but he wanted to get somebody, and then knew you know I kept showing up every week. I think it was surprised I kept showing up every week. Okay. Um. So I don't know, and he just you know he asked me if I want to take it, and I I'd ask Marie. I'm like, if I take this over, can I take phone calls? Right. She said, fine. Yeah, because if you didn't, so yeah, you had yeah, because no I told yeah, that's why I told her. I'm like, can I take phone calls? Because mm-hmm. if I can't take phone calls, there's gonna be I'll be on for like a month, and that's it. You know, yeah, I want it yeah. because at that time I was doing it by myself. Okay. So I was like, if I don't have anyone to talk to, this is gonna be some boring stuff. Yeah. You know, and and I'll go through my format in 15 minutes. I mean, the oh. first couple shows I did. Were just bomb. I mean, dog water bomb. It was bad, real bad. And I, I said, I still sit there and I was like, uh, it, in my life it was probably the most embarrassing. I, I was hyped up, but I was too hyped up. By the time I got in the air, I was blown up. Oh heck yeah! Oh. I was blown yeah. up. Okay. TV show, I was fine, but I was blown up. All right. Within like ten minutes, I go to the commercial. I'm like, I got forty five minutes of this left. Yeah, all by yourself. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this is no, this is bad. So how how long did you kind of keep the pile driver for it? Because you eventually changed it to yeah. I, what, I, what was the it, name? I, and, and you... I had a contest. Okay. To rename it because I'm like it's not right. It's a different show. I don't want to uh, hurt. Uh, I don't want to damage that that pile driver. And at the same time, that pile dri- there's another pile driver that was on the riff. That oh. was from Pennsylvania oh, yes. that started airing on Sundays. So I right. didn't want that mixture of that yeah, too. Oh really? With the same name? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, from Pennsylvania, yeah, because I, I yeah, because when I was working at yeah. working one day, I was flipping through the station. I'm like, "What well, is this pile drive? What?" And at first, the first time I heard, it, I'm like, "Did they go to another radio station and not tell me?" And then I realized <laughs> it was from Pennsylvania because they they, oh. they were calling off the number, and I'm like, "This is not rock action. This, is, you know." Yeah. Um. So I wanted to change the name. So I had the contest on my website. It was a great plug. NW.com, You know, bring you know, make a new name. And during that time, there was. Norman Smiley and the Big Wiggle. Mm-hmm. My show was almost called the Big Wiggle because of <laughs> fan votes. <laughs> really? But inside the ring, obviously, all of out. our fans left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I was the only. Yeah, I was the only WCW mark. I think on the show, the only one that that watched it. No, you know, or, everybody else well, did. Well, no, everyone did. But I think I talked about it more. Or you know, you were I the pushed biggest, it. You were yeah. the biggest fan because, well, really. I, I mean, I was. You yeah. were. I didn't. Then, I didn't like the attitude I, era. Of I think WWE. it's. I think it's just. Prozac like, was too. 
Yeah, like at he, first. he was at first. I think he kind of yeah. jumped over to yeah. WWF yeah. At, at one point. Yeah, I think it was just I was probably pushing into it more or, or talked about it more. So of course, well, your favorite I, I was, was Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah, and and then of course later on, people were joking about Goldberg, and yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So what did you change the name to? Then? Uh, Inside the ring. Inside the ring. Yes. Where did you uh, get? Uh, and then you brought some some new yeah what, what I what on. I did how, how did you what I how I got them? these other guys on the air um, was one I didn't realize they were in high school till like the third week <laughs> okay so okay. and that's gonna bring on another thing as well um, what I did was to get people to listen to the show and maybe call in I'm like because I actually had some advertise I actually free, had some money free, coming in free candy. No, not no, not free candy. No, not not the ML Curly way. No, you're tying anyone up the trees. No. Anyways, what I did was because I worked at, at Hoops and they had two locations. I did Monday Night Wars because there's no football going on. Mm-hmm. So what I did was we put wrestling on the big screens. It was WC, you know, Nitro, and we did Raw. And I decided to go at the time. Some of my place mall was there, and I went into a T-shirt store and bought all these T-shirts and did raffles. Mm-hmm. So somehow these guys were listening to the show. And they were going going to it, and I did it for a couple of weeks, and I actually had decent people. I mean, I was bringing you know they had ten cent wing night and stuff like that, so it was perfect. You know, I brought it did bring some business. I was surprised because I tell people, hey, tell them that you came here for you know uh, the the raffle with Cuba or Cuba told you and you'll get a discount, and they did. So I was like, wow, people are listening, but no one's calling in. What's going on here? You know, and then I I decided to have a raffle. I'm like. That you guys can co-host for a day. Well, only two guys bought raffle tickets for that. So then I, I told him, I'm like, you know what? Since you guys are the only two that bought a raffle ticket, come to the studio, I'll put you on the air. And, you know, we did one. We, we meshed really well. And then I was like, if you guys want to come on again, go ahead. And they kept showing up. What were the names? Is one of them Ryan, Ryan Smith? No, 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 no. That was later on. Oh, no, okay. that it was after that. No, oh, okay. that was after the whole BWA controversy thing. Oh, okay. Um, but no, um, it was uh, one guy named is Pat Strait. Um, he what he wrest, he was the uh, solid goalie wrestled on that BWA. He was that guy. Hmm. Um, but he's actually he's done columnists and stuff now. But they were uh, seniors or juniors at Rochester Adams High School. My, my so were they? Mother. So they were both part of the BWA. Yeah, they were. Yeah, him and then Mark. I I think the one it was like the magnificent Mark or something like that. And then um, okay. Pat, I don't remember what uh, the, cho- the the was chosen one Pat, and then the other guy that in the being in the BWA that Devin Central, he would come on. Like, a bunch of the BWA guys would come on, and I you know have guests obviously as well. So 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 when they so the last BWA show that they did the ones the one that we did over WPON and the one that you refereed at, uh, no they they did a show after that. They did. They did another BWA yep, show. Yeah, that? yeah. Okay. They, that, Wasn't that, one, that supposed to be the last one though? Um, because, because yeah, because the whole the whole WDIV uh, Channel Four Devin Skilligan thing. Yeah, yeah. Because they had done one at the the uh, center that the uh, that little um, complex that was right by the Rochester Skating Center. They had a show there, hmm. and then they had the <clears throat> skating center show. And yeah, because that was the one that we did. Yeah, though. that was the one that you guys did. Because I was only supposed to referee I'm like, noise. Like, 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 yeah, <laughs> like, 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 like two. I was supposed to only referee two matches, and the one guy didn't show up, and I was supposed to, you know, play by play. And instead, I refereed the whole thing, didn't know what I was doing, and then totally went heel on the crowd and forgot that it was live on the air. So I said the f word like seven times over the air, but of course, the board guy. Probably fell asleep or was having a cigarette or stoned in his car or whatever, so he missed all of that. Right. Um, and then they had a show after that at the hall, and they were on Channel Fifty that um, that the city or, or Devin Scullion was trying to get them shut down again. So they had it at the v, uh, VWF Hall in downtown Rochester. Mm. They had two shows, and they're like, "If you want refunds, we'll give you the money back." Mm. In this small building, they put over two hundred kids, two hundred people. Hmm. Two shows in a row. So that's 400 people nice. that really? they had on there. Okay. For the two shows, and not one person asked for a refund. Jeez. Really? It was hot in there. I mean, Channel 50 was there the first night because, you know, they'd made news. Yeah. So they had, you know, they're like, BWA has final, you know, has okay. final show, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. how come, how come, uh, Skillian, Devin Skillian, the uh, media mark was trying to get them shut down? 
I think it's because of the dangers of wrestling at that time. Because at that time, at that time, I think that's when that one kid gave uh, his brother a Stone Cold Stoner or something like that. And it was all in the news. It was, it was like an 11 year old did something to like a six year old brother. It was 2001. I, I, I mean, so it, it was in the news. Yeah, yeah. It, it was basically when backyard wrestling was becoming uh, a thing in the media. So uh, that's so they were just all over it, trying to shut it down. Huh. Um, I, I remember that part of it. But uh, so so the BWA guys kind of all went off to college, correct? And they, yeah, they just stopped showing up. And, and during that time, I was told of another um, radio show, but it was on the internet. Mm. Um, and that was the Ryan Smith show. That's how I got Ryan and them on oh, the show. Okay. Because at first, I, I'd never heard him. So I was actually... <clears throat> Uh, and I even told Ryan this way later, and I was like, you know, I was actually, like, calling you out on the air, and I didn't even know who you were, didn't know, I'd never listened to an episode. And then finally, I was like, I, I listened to an episode, and I said, hey, you do a show in, in Michigan, why don't you come on the air? So he brought, it was him and Professor K, who was actually his uncle. They oh. came on the show. Okay. And at that time, as well, Ryan was in high school, but his voice and everything else, you wouldn't think he was. Right. I figured he was out until, yeah. like, one day, I'm like... I'm like, here, I'll come pick you up. He's like, well, I don't get out of school until like 3 o'clock. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you're in school? <laughs> so technically he, was, technically, he was probably the youngest person that ever broadcast. So it's like WPR. finding out your girlfriend. It really isn't a girl, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was weird. <laughs> so when did you add uh, Mojo or Bud Laws? Well, well Mojo, um, he, came, he came in as a guest on the show. And <clears throat> he was friends with Ryan from the show because Ryan did – took pictures for uh, Section 8 and XICW and stuff, and I became their ring announcer when they, they were doing the show at Hot Rocks. I was like, hey, if you guys need a ring announcer, I'll do it. I mean, I, I did ring announcing for uh, um, the Canadian Destroyer show because he had needed one. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, if you guys want, they're like, yeah, go ahead, show up. We'll, we'll use it as a ring announcer, and then that's how I got associated with independent wrestling in Section 8. Okay. So at one point, so that was the Yeah, point. yeah, he basically came on because what it was is he kept showing up um, onto the show. Mojo did. Well, me, Ryan, and, and uh, our Professor K were doing the show. And Ryan took his show from the internet and put it on an hour after mine. Mm. So for, instead of it being 6 to 7 every Tuesday, it was 6 to 8 o'clock wrestling. But we, huh. So basically, we kept all the WCW and independent stuff on mine. And he, at that time, he was the webmaster for the Honky Tonk Man. Oh, really? you know, 15 years old. You know, yeah, he, that's awesome. So that, and he also, um, we had, he had a, a honky tonk. So he did like a, a, like every other week we had like a 15 minute segment that he played the honky tonk. I mean, he basically just brought his show from online and brought it to the radio station. Okay. Yeah. Um, we had Playboy Bobby Starr was on the show. Um, that was every, I think that was every other week as well. Uh, Jake the Snake, because he had a little segment on there because he was doing web stuff for him as well. So, you know, it was two hours, you know, and there was a falling out between Ryan and his uncle. And then Ryan wouldn't, didn't want to come to the station. And he's like, I'm not coming to the station anymore if, if uh, Professor K is going to be there. So I had the, the uh, uh, lovely displeasure. Actually, to me, it was, was kind of cool and everyone got pissed off at me. I fired him on the air before the Ryan Smith show. Yeah, that so, one so, on tape. Yeah, it's on tape. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but he, he said because you know he said that um, he wouldn't do the show and he he would pull the show off the air. So I was like, great. Now I'm gonna have no. It's just gonna who be me, did, me wait, and Mojo. Who, who, who did, who did R- you Ryan fire? did. You fi- oh no no I, I I fired Professor K. Okay. Uncle. Because he he was starting, he was lying, he was getting out of this other junk that he he was saying like, oh, I, I'm popular. I, you know, there's a, a radio show in Pennsylvania that's flying me out there. Da da da. And we're like, <laughs> you can't even talk on the mic. You know, I thought I was bad, but come on. You know, no one's gonna believe that. So <clears throat> I fired him on the air so that people weren't trying to figure out what happened. So he, there wasn't, you know, I knew the whole thing, so he couldn't be like, oh, well, I quit. Da da da. You know, they wouldn't pay me. Nobody was getting paid. Mm, right. So I just made it that way that I, you know, I fired him on the air. I'm like, your services are no longer needed on Inside the Ring or the Ryan Smith show. <laughs> and then a month later, you know, Mojo stayed on as a co-host. Um, so that was the three of us there. And then I think it was like a month or two later, we, we combined the shows to the Ringside Edge. 
So okay. we merged the two shows. So then it was two hours. And, and then at that point, was it pretty much all Michigan independent stuff? No, no. We, we still kept it the same way. But we, okay. but what we did is we'd have the guests come on. And sometimes we'd have them start on the air with us. And, you know, if they want to spend the whole two hours, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But usually the independent stuff would be in the first hour. Okay. We still kind of kept it the same way. Okay. You know, so I do the, you know, we do the what happened over the weekend, you know, with, with independent results. And then we'd come back. And then we talk about what happened on Raw, what happened, you know, what happened on the pay-per-views, whatever, mm-hmm. you know. And then from six thirty-five to six forty-five, wh- whatever the time frame was, um, then we'd have the in- interview for fifteen twenty minutes, and then we just kind of go from there. And then we do, you know, actually, I think what it was is we did all the WCW stuff on my on my hour, and then the second hour we did the W the the WWE and you know ECW stuff. Okay. Hmm. So. Um, so at what point did, uh, did you meet Levi Blue, the very first guest on Le- Wrestling Le- yeah. Night as well? Levi Blue, <clears throat> actually the first time I met him, um, I know, well, he came on the air for XICW. Um, I met him, let me see, I met him, I think it was at Section 8, but he, him, um, Sean Smiley, Big Zed, you know, there's, we got Dirty White Trash tag team, um, and yeah, and then uh, DBA Malcolm Monroe the second they came on to uh, talk about XICW because it was their I think they came on for their first show so they all came on the show no no it was the second show that they were doing they're advertising the second show and that's how I met Levi um, and the only way I what's funny is that <clears throat> the only way I actually knew what his real name was is because I was dating someone at the time and I'm outside smoking and uh, she says my name. Nobody knew what my name was, and all of a sudden, three of us turned around. <laughs> so, you know, the one, you know, the, the, so you know, I, I didn't know Levi's, and all of a sudden, I'm like, "That's your name?" It was just funny because she said, "John," and all of a sudden, we're all like, <laughs> "So, three of the four of us turn around," and then I'm like, "Why did you turn around for?" <laughs> oh, that's not your real name. Oh, okay. Didn't you? Um, didn't Didn't he end up having a match at the studio? at the radio station? Yes. Yeah, that was. Man, I don't even know how we we even got them to do it. It was, it was more we wanted to figure something out on how we were going to merge the shows. We wanted like a big bang thing, and then we, they said there was like a feud in in section eight, it's section eight TZW. Um, I think between those guys and and um, Tommy Thorne and Frag. So we at, we said they're like, you guys want to do a match at the studio. And he's like, well, who's going to watch them? I'm like, I don't know. We'll tell people to show up. Because I was thinking at that time, hey, we had that fight on the TV, and look yeah. how many people showed up. I'm like, right. why not? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we did it. No one showed up. Whatever. Didn't care. Mm-hmm. But they, we didn't know what was going to go on at all. They told us how they were going to start it, and that was it. Other than that, I didn't know what was going on. I had to do play-by-play. Of course, I sucked. But I'm like, they, they hand me this wireless microphone. Hopefully it works. We no one tested it around the building. So once I go outside the building, if it don't work, it's just gonna be dead air. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we're he Mojo's recording it. I didn't know anything that was going on. So half the time I was trying not to laugh. Mm. That that the other half I was trying to do commentary over radio for half an hour. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. I did the best I could, you know. It, it yeah. came it came off well from, you know, just watching the, the, the video and stuff, but mm. I honestly don't know how we got them into it. I think they were just more of, we want to get over on the radio. Let's do something different. Yeah, that's that's a good thing about being in the wrestling business is like, you know, from like a radio or TV or media perspective, there's so much crap you can do and it really doesn't cost like a crap load of money. You know, it's Mm -hmm. all like improv. Yeah, they they, they literally (laughs) improv everything. Like, like if, if if you go online and you look up the Radio City Massacre, you'll see it with <laughs> Levi Blue, Dirty White Trash, and Flag, and them. Them going into the trash can was all improvised. So they didn't even know what was in there, and they were supposed to be on top of it, and the top fell, and the camera barely catches them just all of a sudden, like, you know, elevator shoot straight right into the trash. Uh-huh. And, you know, so they didn't I know what was going it. on. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I have I don't, I've it. never seen it. Yeah. I don't uh-huh. even know if I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah it's on I'll there. look it up. Yeah. Yeah, it, right. it's on there. That that was how we brought up, you know, the 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 new merging of the show. Okay, was right. you know the ringside edge. Okay, well, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, you mentioned uh, the show, or I'm sorry, the match that you had 
at the studio <laughs> for the Jabber Hour, which is probably the plateau of our show. But uh, before we get, how did before that, we get to how that, did that, not, not well, how did that I hope that's what I want to ask right. you. Like, because you, because you and John, I thought you and Rock Action were pretty tight. Uh, what started the rift? Because it seemed like it had something to do with the show. Even though he sold you or had had you take over the show, it seemed like there was still some animosity he, there for some reason. Because in my I mind, don't know. that's that's what there was. That's when the rift kind of yeah, started. If, if, if you look at my face, I still don't know what happened at all. <laughs> because leading all the way to that fight, I'm like, is there a script? Is this real? What What is going on here? No. I didn't think it was going to happen. Then he showed them like, oh no, what what is you know, there's no script. What am I gonna die on TV? What's going on here? <laughs> you know? Yeah, you it, did the you did the workout videos and uh, yeah, yeah, at it, hoops. hoops. Yeah, go, yeah, it was I remember seeing it. I don't I don't think well, I have guys, it on tape. No, I, I went through a table in the basement. Is that, okay. Is that what it was? I remember yeah, watching I went through a table like a in the basement or a chair. I, huh? Wasn't there like a trash can or a chair? <laughs> yeah, I hit myself with a chair, yeah, yeah, and then the rest of the table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, no, on TV, I hit myself with that. <laughs> I think I hit you I, I, with the garbage can lid. At, yeah, you at hit me with the garbage can lid. I hit, I hit myself with the cookie pan, but the thing is... No, I, I hit the cookie pan. No, I think yeah, I hit no, you with no, the I, pan. no, there's video of me doing it. I bend it over my head. Oh, okay. The thing is, but I, I grabbed I the wrong one. I didn't grab the thin one. I grabbed the double one. <laughs> so in the video, all of a sudden, I'm dazed. I, I gave myself that. a concussion <laughs> live on air. So the next 20 minutes, I was like, huh, what? I, I couldn't talk. <laughs> I literally had a concussion huh. because I, I it was supposed to bend the first time. It was supposed to be one of those really crappy thin ones. Yeah, yeah. But I grabbed the wrong one. So after I, I hit myself the second that, time, that yeah, because like after I don't well, know it's if good because the other one would have looked too fake. So <laughs> yeah, I mean I bent that one, so I guess I had a hard head, but yeah. Was, <laughs> uh, but but no, that that but, whole but, thing. But I don't know what match, happened before the, the match. Like you guys were I, actually supposed to have a pose down. Yeah. <laughs> and right. the air too and he no shows that yeah yeah go but, figure uh, he he no shows that one <laughs> but uh that would have been the most embarrassing thing i had done in my life we get the pose down <laughs> because there's not enough baby oil or or magnifying glasses or anything to, I get, to help hey, me in that situation you know what though i give you credit because you showed up for it and uh I did, for whatever I, reason well, well no one thought he was going to show up anyways because all the other times you say he was going to show up but, but yeah, there was like a couple things. Yeah, leading up but to but it. getting getting to your original question, I think what it was is that I don't know if it was he was surprised I was still on the air, that I actually had guests because then he tried saying that I was stealing his guests. I'm like, when did you ever have these guys on? Because uh, one of the promoters uh, for the IWO, Mr. Big, he showed up like two weeks later, and he's like, "Where's John at?" And I'm like, "He's not here anymore." And he's like, "Oh," I'm like, "I do the show if you want to come on." Go yeah. ahead. So he came on, and okay. then Gina, uh, um, Gina Austin showed up, and then I started talking more about the independence because you know I had Mr. Big on. I didn't know what I was doing. It was the first time I had a guest, so we talked for like thirty-five minutes, mm-hmm. and I was you know just talking about the independence. I changed my website from uh, all pro wrestling to independent because there was no websites. Yeah. So. You know, all of a sudden, I kept having independent wrestlers on there all the time. You know, I'm like, if you want to show up, show up. Mm-hmm. Um, and tried to get people, you know, I'd email them through uh, CompuServe, if you guys remember that yeah. service. That, that was my email. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's how I started on the internet. Well, well, well CompuServe, too, kind of screwed me, because if we had had phones like we do now, I would have gotten the email. And, and you, I know you guys don't believe this. When I told you guys, I almost had Rob Van Dam on the TV show. He, had, I had actually talked to him on CompuServe, but I did not go in my email. So when I got back from the show that day, he had emailed at seven o'clock about coming on the show. No, oh, really? you know what? I so, believe you because because oh, yeah. you ended up having you had Rhino. Yeah, he was in the studio. Rhino, yeah, Rhino yeah, and then I called uh, him the WCW TV champion by accident <laughs> to his face. How I made it out of that building, I still don't know. <laughs> uh, so let's back to the lead up. So, so you think that, that that's kind of what's, what started it then? Um, well, I, 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 in a way, I was, I was trying to make myself into a gimmick, in a way. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I made comments. I think it had to do with something that happened on the TV show or whatnot. Or he called in and made a snide comment. Or someone <laughs> online. It could have been on a Facebook. It could have been on, not a Facebook forum, but it could have been on a web forum. Right. Um, then all of a sudden... No, I actually, I, I actually, I think what it was is that we were, I was talking about stuff on the on the TV uh, on 
what I'd done the radio show on the TV show. And I think, in a way, Mark was kind of pushing the whole thing. Oh, you have so, oh, well, you know, he would make the snide comments about rock action, you know, his jokes. Yeah. And I think what it was is John took one the wrong way. Mm. And then I kind of, not really paying attention, said it on the radio. And then it just kind of escalated. From there. But then at that same time, I didn't know if it was like, real, if it was a work gimmick. Right. What was going on? Because it was kind of hard be, to tell. Well, it was because he'd be on the air and he'd be like, you know, like that one time I mean, he came with the tape and he's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm here to kick your ass, you know. And then well, after, then after he's like, hey, how's it going, Sean? Hey, you know, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Right, right. So, uh, so leading up to, so finally, when the shoot fight is 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 is, is going to happen and it's the squash it's set match, up, but yeah, set up. Well, I mean, did you have? I didn't know what I was doing. But did you have trepidation? I mean, obviously you had. You trained for it. I mean, you, I didn't train. You did. I trained. No, no, no. The, the total time of my video is how much I trained that entire time. You know, I, I was. You know, I kept saying I was. I was training with this one wrestler guy, and the only training was was me talking to him on instant messenger the whole entire time. But from a viewer perspective. You know, yeah. From, kind of yeah. The storyline. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it was. You know. It, it was always the whole. Well, who's going to show it? You know, you really is Rock going to show up or not? <laughs> I mean, you, I, I, mean, I was it, eating it, and I was breathing. That that was my training. That I was, mean, as far as wrestling goes, though, I mean, I don't think. I don't that think was, that, rock, that rock. wasn't wrestling. I don't even know what that was. But I'm saying Rocky Action. It's I like don't I think. felt. It's like I fell into a hole and he fell on top of me. <laughs> it's like but swimming think, to get up. But I don't think Rocky Action trained in a wrestling manner. No, no. Up, up for that either. No, uh, no. but. Uh, but e- either way, um, I think we're you both- end up you end up losing the match, which the stipulation was that the loser leaves the the show. Yeah, um, that was an exciting event for what, <laughs> for Lake Orion. It was man. No, I, I, <laughs> it was. I, I got to say, for the people that weren't around, at I that, can't believe at that how time, many people showed up. Yeah, like no. that literally yeah. blew my right. mind. Yeah, first of all, the people that showed up, we I mean, so that was I mean, we mentioned it on the radio show or about the radio show, but. During the jobber hour, too, it was like the phones would be ringing off the yeah, hook. Yeah. As soon as that match started, the phone did not ring <laughs> yeah. until so, uh, until so the match was together. over, and then it started ringing yeah, off the li- hook again. Li- literally, once he said one, two, three, the phones the lit phone up. Like, literally. <laughs> right. They couldn't yeah. even give me a second of death before they <laughs> called in. Uh, so, <laughs> so you... Uh, you I, was, know, I was blown up within two minutes on that as well. Just before, just so we get to that, you guys could see. It. I mean, I was wearing pants, a black shirt. You know, there's 30 people in there. You couldn't breathe. Yeah, and I, was, you know, I walk in there all blown up before I even do well, it. I, I, I blew up walking from the door to the other door. <laughs> well, if you have a legit fight, you know, they're like 30 seconds, and you're blown up. If right. you have, how long did that like last? a legit that like wrestling match? Minutes? You got to be in good shape to you know go that long. How long? How long did it did it end up going? There was a like 10. 15, 13, I think it 13 was, minutes or something like yeah, that. How it lasted like more that. than 30 seconds after I was on my back other than that. <laughs> I, yeah. it, it, like, on, honestly, you could tell just by how we, like, kind of, you know, started it. Nobody knew what was going on. <laughs> well, you guys didn't well, know John, what was going on. John we didn't lock up and no. everything, yeah. you know? I mean. No. No, nobody knew. Yeah, right. I mean, nobody knew. I mean, it could have gone. It could have gone sideways a so thousand, quickly. Thousand ways. Oh, yeah. I mean, really, and and yeah, yeah it was legit. So. It was a shoot. I we didn't know. What was I will. Happen. I will give him credit that he could have ended it within thirty seconds <laughs> and let it stretch as far as he did. <laughs> yeah. Because I know you guys, like I said, you guys and and Mark Prozac three sixteen. You all figured this is over with. Once I was down, there, you all figured <laughs> yeah. it's over with. I well, I got to give him credit too because I thought that too. I was like, well, if this gets over quickly, that's that's gonna kind of stink. Then we got like, yeah. you know, then we got to talk about it yeah. for fifteen minutes or whatever. Uh, so I mean, I gave him credit for for stretching it out and making a show out of it. Yeah, uh, definitely because I mean, especially when he was doing like the chic when when yeah. when when uh, you know Frank Williams was getting yeah. on him about the stuff and yeah. he, and he was doing that stuff and, and some of the other stuff that he did, but. Well, um, John did say, or Rock Action did say that he at first, I mean, he was serious when he went in because he just didn't know, yeah. you know, like if you neither get, of us knew what was, yeah, right. But like you're really, he didn't just think, oh, I'm gonna waste this guy. He he didn't know, 
and mm. he'll he'll say I, that. It's I, like I could I could I could have been like know. this small little psychopath. All of a sudden, like the yeah. bell dings, and true. all of a sudden I go nuts. Yeah. That's, that's true, and, and nobody knew, and he mm. didn't know. He definitely didn't know either. Yeah. And, and I mean, we were worried that he was not going to show. I was worried, anyway, yeah, because he didn't show up until. Well, he because right. he didn't show up for the pose down the week before. Yeah, because he didn't show up about halfway through the show, I think, mm. or yeah, maybe maybe a little bit. Could have done that, a contract signing. I was, I was getting worried. Yeah, I was getting a little worried, but anyway, so um. So you, so you did leave the show, and, and, and people actually chanted for me. That that I actually yeah. laughed when that happened. I'm like, <laughs> literally, he's got his knees on my shoulders, and I'm laughing because people are like, I'm like, is is this really happening? Well, some of and the then people... I tried to move like an inch, you know, but I was just like, <laughs> someone's what? actually chanting. Why? You know, people actually. It's David I, I, versus Goliath. Yeah, it, you know, I was yeah, I was like the Rey Mysterio to the Andre the Giant, you know, in this yeah, whole thing. In a well, no, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> like, you know, compared to him, I had no, you know, it's basically like that. There's no way this this yeah. skinny dude here is. Oh so, yeah. Okay, uh, that, that was a, that, that that was fantastic. That was quality so, like, like, entertainment. It, yeah, definitely. Uh, and like I said, that was probably the highlight of. Of the Jabber Hour. I mean, there there was some angles that I'll get into later, but uh, so um, so we were trying to figure out a way because you wanted to get back on the show, and uh, <laughs> we were trying to figure out a way to do it. Um, so uh, I, I guess it was you Frank, knew this was coming. So I oh, guess, I, oh, I was <laughs> I was expecting the first thing. <laughs> so I guess, I guess it was Frank Williams Jr. that uh, talked you into coming back. As Bubbles the Clown. Um, so how did that Man. How, how, did, how did that all come about? You look like a I legit clown. I don't man. remember. Yeah. I, My, the I mean, the was, girl I was, was dating good. at the time, she did good. And, yeah. and I felt, I actually was upset after that, you know, what it was is I sat there and I was like, all right, this is cool. This is fine. You know, whatever. I'll do something for entertainment, whatever. So, so be before, before you go there, let's explain to people who may not know. You know, it was kind of like a, a loser leaves the uh, jobber hour match, right? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And then you were you were trying to get back on the show, and you couldn't as Q Ball yeah. or as Sean. Yeah. But were so we, like were, you do were in we wrestling, doing the QTV things. Not yet. Not, not, oh, that, yeah. Okay, that was after. Bubbles, okay. Bubbles okay. So that. so he couldn't come back on the show, and then what happened? In pro wrestling, like somebody, if they lost a loser leave town match, they'd put a mask on yeah. and come back and be like, or something, yeah. oh, that's really so-and-so, but you can't see their face. So yeah. that was the impetus behind right. uh, cue ball dressing up as a clown and trying to get back on yeah. the show. Right. So, uh, so yes, I mean, the, the, the makeup was great. Unfortunately... I think we only got one shot of you or two shots of you in the in the yeah. in the in the get up because yeah. you were running a we camera. Were, no, no, they were sit. No, he was sitting to the side, but yeah, they, but, right by the cameras. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we didn't want to reveal it. Yeah, because originally you guys want, didn't want to reveal. Originally, it what it was is you guys want me to be one of the camera guys. Is what it was. Oh, and then you guys came up with the clown gimmick. Because I remember you guys wanted to pull something. It was either or you. We were talking about it that day. Either the clown or maybe all of a sudden. Wait a minute. What, what's wrong with the camera? And all of a sudden, realize <laughs> oh. it's me. It was oh, one, it was okay, like one of those so maybe, maybe that was it. Then, yeah, because uh, I, I just I thought. No, no, mind, I remember that that we were, that was side. discussed. Okay, we had discussed yeah, that. That had been be discussed. Yeah, it, it was something. Of, you know, if this didn't work, then all of a sudden, let's do. You know, maybe or maybe it was discussed before the clown thing. Like maybe we'll have you as a camera guy, and like something's wrong. We, you guys know this in the middle of the show. What what's wrong with the camera guy? Okay. What's wrong with the new camera guy? And then realize it's me, and you know. I think that might have been it. I'm, I'm not right. probably because that would make yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. So you just bust in through the door with a bunch of balloons. Yeah, <laughs> right. In party favors. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> so I I don't even remember what you were gonna do on on the show. Did were you gonna no, do like no what no from what or no anything, no or? what it what no what it was <laughs> no no I, I I was literally a one trick pony. Um, <laughs> what it what, all I remember was is that. I was told I was going to get a cake smashed in my face. On the very first show? On that show. That's what was going to happen. No, I don't. I, I, I don't, swear I don't, that's what was going to happen. That. I don't but, remember, but having, I, I don't remember, I don't remember what, having a cake. Or maybe, so, maybe, something was supposed to be getting in the face. That's what I remember. Maybe Frank Williams Jr. told you that. <laughs> Maybe that's what he told me. But I don't think but, he had a cake. But, 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 well, smashed me in the face with something. I, I don't know what it was. <laughs> okay. Well, not a fist, but, you know, something that would, you know. Maybe like a pie. Yeah, <laughs> something, whatever, you know. Or use a prop and, you something know, hit me less, with it, whatever it was. Something less hardcore. Um, but, 
I sat there and I automatically started getting angry. Okay. I think it was because when I saw myself on the TV, I I looked ridiculous. At first I was all about it until I actually saw my face and then I got <laughs> I got pissed. Okay. Um because in my head, because I had a chip on my shoulder, I'm a host of a radio show dressed as a freaking clown on a public access show. I thought, okay, even though I'm on AM, I thought I was above the TV show for some stupid reason. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I was young. At that time, you know, I was young and having some issues. So all of a sudden, I just got pissed. I, I think what it was, I, well, I think didn't... he did have a pot. I swear he had something. I don't remember maybe, what it was. Maybe he did, but what happened was when you when you – Got when you finally snapped enough. And Mark, said, Action, Mark Action initially came into the studio. Oh, did he? Is what it was. Yeah, and because. Uh, but yeah, he no. Cause, yeah, cause that's he, right. That's right. He all of a sudden I turned he, around. That's what it was because he he, he, had he not popped been, up in the back and then I got pissed that I was getting set, I was getting set up. Right. That's what it was. Right. <laughs> well, that's I, what I, set I, me off. I, yeah, and I think you thought that I had set you up. Um, that, yeah, that's what it was. Because I remember I had a conversation with the, one of you guys afterwards. Like I didn't know he was showing up. That that's what it was. Because I remember something set no, me no, off. No, no, we didn't know he was showing up either. No, no, no. You guys were saying you guys didn't know. I right. I said you, I felt set up, and you're like, no, because I because I, right. cause I remember because because uh, Prozac, Frank Williams, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> he because he worked because uh, I, I worked at the one restaurant. And he went in there. And I remember him saying that because he was doing the distribution thing. Mm -hmm. He had said that to me. I think like twice. He's like, dude. I didn't know he was showing up. None of us. It was not a setup. None, and I was none of us. None of us did because at the time he probably hadn't been there in months. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then all of a sudden I showed well, up. I had talked to him. Well, I of course I, he he lived in the area, so he could just flip on the TV. Oh, well, no, he didn't. He no, he couldn't yeah. see Lake Orion. He, oh, he, he could. Was, he was. Oh, yeah, he was in Oxford. So, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah right. but he would just show up every once in a yeah, while. Yeah, he would too, just show yeah. up. He just randomly showed up that day. I believe I had talked to him on the phone and just out of the blue, but we weren't even talking about the show. And then out of the blue, he was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up to the show," and I was like, "No." And I even said, don't. I said, no, don't show up to the show. And so, of course, so that's probably why. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do? Don't open that Either box. be like, yeah. yeah, I mean, what am I supposed to do? So, of course, that's going to be so, so, set up his so curiosity. All the, all the, like, why is he telling me not so to show up? So all the past times when you told him to show up, he, he wouldn't show up. But then when you tell him not to show up, he would show up. That's pretty much how it went. Yeah. You know, remember him and the Oxford posse. Remember them? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you would mention it. Um, so past, I mean, was there any? Do you remember any like long term plans for Bubbles the Clown being discussed no. or anything? I I had no idea what was going on. It was just dress up as a clown. <laughs> okay, that, that's uh, that's well, all. That's how you were getting back on the show. Yeah, somehow you were, you were gonna be. Yeah, like, and then a clown something the was show. just gonna transfer because I think it had something to do with. Um, I think it had to do with the either the the AT and T title. Yeah. Oh. Or and also because he hadn't he hadn't defended the title or something oh, like yeah, that, so that's what it was. Yeah. So uh, finally, it was just me like, well, you got kicked off the show, but you're still trying to be on. He doesn't come on the show. I think that's. I think there was a storyline, yeah. but I didn't know what it was. But eventually, there was going to be something where I would just eventually just be a part of it. Yeah. Okay. Because wasn't wasn't the next thing after that you had a bag on your head? No, no, that, I, no, I no, no, I never even came back after that. No. I was done. No, you did come back. Did I? Well, yeah, because we did. Yeah. We started doing the QTV stuff. He didn't have a bag on his head. That was the oh. QTV stuff that we did. Yeah, and the couch. And uh, yeah, so who bought um, that couch? Anyways, didn't you guys say that that thing was for sale? I don't after think. the studio, they did. Sell I thought it. when you, yeah, oh, they did. Yeah, they still. They, <laughs> they did sell it. I don't know. I think I might have sent it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you sent me something. Yeah, <laughs> that, like, that's oh, why I brought it up. He's like, they still have that thing. I'm like, man, how many people have touched that couch? Right. Yeah, so all the talent that have been on that couch. Yeah. So actually the QTV thing was pretty cool. Uh anybody that doesn't know, I mean our our show I think gave uh people like a lot of people that worked there, like a lot of the interns and a lot of the kids a chance cuz I was I was just like whatever. Do do whatever you want, yeah. you know. Um so I think that gave them a chance to experiment with a lot of stuff. But the QTV thing was you breaking into our feed. Yeah. You were actually sitting in the, the, <laughs> in the front end yeah. of the studio. But but it, you, I think you were supposed to be from home. You were mm -hmm. breaking in. And um, well, I think we were going to continue well, not, that. Well, not, that ju well, not just that. What what was the one thing? Was it uh, – now, did you guys tape that vignette? It was outside the parking lot. Was that be – was that – was that before the fight? Which – With, with, uh, with their driving off in the car. Was that before that? 
I remember that vignette. Someone that recorded the a, vignette. Was that before the fight or after the fight? Or that? Are you talking? That was when, a different. Uh, yeah, was that, that Dan Hemi? Yeah, I think that was pulling Dan a stone cold Steve Austin figure out behind a car. Yeah, that, it might have been. That was like yeah. one of the chains, last. On yeah, the you're, jump, you're jumping ahead. <laughs> yeah, almost, no, I, I'm just. I don't remember when it was yeah. or what it was for. That it, it, that just popped in my head. Like I'm going to say okay. it now yeah, before that, I forget. Yeah, that was yeah. like one of the very last storylines that, yeah. that we were. But we did have vignettes and stuff. Yeah, not a lot, but. You know, we did a lot with that, like you were yeah, mentioning. The, yeah, you know? and then we had that takeover thing that we did as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so the QTV thing, I don't know why we like phased that out, and then, um, I mean, I think it was going to continue to go, and then, and then Frank Williams Jr. I think came up with the idea to bring that, bring you guys yeah. back and do the takeover of the show without discussing it with us. Yeah. Originally, he was trying to get us, but we got wind of it. Oh, so you guys didn't even know about that. I got. We didn't know. I, so, so that was basically exactly. that was literally all improv in a way. Right, everything was. Well, we got. I mean, even even if we knew something, like. <laughs> well, well, know, no, I'm well, just yeah. saying that you. I figured you guys already knew. No, he was so that to, so that was legit. So that in, was a, in, in a way that was another thing really that he was trying to get us on. Yeah, uh, well, I, I but I had I thought you guys knew because you no. know you guys talked more or whatever. So I didn't know. No, no I no. always thought that half the time. No, I was being the, the fool. Yeah, no. it worked the whole time because. I didn't really talk, and you know, you guys had all known each other before. All those video so inserts and everything like that. I mean, we would know that there's something going on, but I have no idea yeah. what. Yeah. Okay. You know. So the first, <laughs> so he has you show up the first time, but like I said, I had gotten wind of it, so I had kind of thrown oh, the whole notepad thing when I showed up as to why I was there or whatever. Yeah. I was sitting that, in the seat. Yeah. So that, I, that was the very first. Yeah. First time. Yeah. So, okay. um, yeah. I thought you guys knew that. No. No, no, no. He was trying to get us. He was trying to... But you just yeah. didn't know what he was doing. It was and just, all of a sudden, I show up out of the well, Yeah, because yeah, well, what's, what's funny is that you guys were... I can't cause remember. Because I remember I came in like probably a couple minutes after you guys were on the air. And I was sitting there like, please tell me this door is going to be unlocked or this is going to be... You know. Yeah. Yeah. During the show, and all of a sudden, ding dong, the bell goes off over yeah. the, you know, the air. But Yeah. Keep no, well, Eddie. It's your show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember how. Well, that wasn't originally. Right. We, yeah. we, because cause originally he tried to get us uh but like i said i had gotten wind of it so we had we had switched some stuff around to where it didn't go the way that he had planned it so then after he just wanted to drop it all together and i was like no i'm like we already you know you already did that we might as yeah. well go with it so then we knew about it yeah the actual takeover and the joe johnson yeah no joe johnson did not get fired no we got fired we got joe fired us yeah joe fired yeah. us because of because uh frank williams jr mm-hmm was actually on the the Lake Orion Village Council at the time, yeah. but he turned that into a storyline yeah. for the wrestling show. Which, which, that he fired which was us. which was genius, to be honest. Oh, I know. Yeah. You know, he, because you know, he, it, it, he, it, it was real. Uh, it, no one really knew. Okay, is this real or not? Because that that added the whole fantasy, yeah. fantasy right there. So yeah. when when he went into yeah. the next meeting, they actually confronted him yeah, about it. Brought them. They were they were like I, I they were heard, like they're, heard about they're that. like, dude, you you can't be using your influence. <laughs> <laughs> from from being here to fire people on the TV yeah, show. I remember <laughs> that. We had already been the subject of some uh, Lake Orion Cable Commission meetings. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. So it, it wasn't, you yeah, know, like not, it, not it wasn't getting, just not, like not getting in there the war and, and everything else. All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, there had been a <laughs> whole snuff, story, yeah. and we had kind of gotten involved in a little, like, politics around here. You know, so it was it was yeah. something that, that looked like it could be legit. And people really thought that we were getting fired people that we know <laughs> yes you know yeah so exactly. yeah it worked out great <laughs> i didn't know what was going on so <laughs> I, I was you know i was the pawn in the whole thing i was like hey do, you are you working that day no hey come on all right that's fine whatever you know i mean it, it, you know i thought it worked out worked out it well worked out i mean we, we did it for i think you guys did it for like a month or something and then my and I don't know. Man, me, don't me, know you wearing, know. me wearing a suit under those lights was the worst. That had to be horrible. <laughs> oh, and, horrible. and then I had to be, I had, I couldn't be me. I had to be like, uh, mortician type. You know, with the voices, I couldn't do it. The glasses, I couldn't see anything. I was probably Wait. still, I probably still had that concussion going on. I, I just, <laughs> I couldn't do anything. You know, I, it was not me. It was so unnatural. That, yeah. Uh, so. You know, uh, what's his name that was doing it with me? I was literally like, okay, I'm sandbagging this whole thing. Uh, let him talk. I can't, you know, the heat. <laughs> he did a good job, though. Yeah, he did. Know? Yeah, that's actually uh, my cousin. Yeah, that, okay. That, that, uh, and his name on there was E.W. E.W., uh, that's what it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yep. so um, 
So, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. I didn't think you were still around when we were doing the storyline with Dan Hemme. Uh, and that was like the last thing that we did, and then the no, job hour was pretty much done after I, that. You, I think, you, uh, guys, that was I like think he, you guys went on for like another year or so after I was gone, or maybe it six might have been. It might have been around Because there, I, I was, uh, we, I left the radio station in um, August of 2001, and then we had our return show online on September 11th. Which was the show that we called, you know, no, the show that nobody heard because of, you know, what happened. Yeah. That day. All right. Um, but I swear you guys did a show, of, a couple shows after that. Well, we, I know we did because we did, we did. you were on the on our last show. So there had been some. Oh, it was on the last show. There oh, had been right. some. I don't remember. Going, oh there, man, I we, I must have been. But yeah, we had know. some. We had <laughs> some little angle going on because our last show we interviewed. You brought you brought in. I want to say the the count. Oh, uh, that was the last show. That, yeah. that when, ended when, up when the, I when I brought that, yeah because we he was uh, they were talking smack uh, about Brock. They came on there and and also if you guys remember he wore that that CK shirt, but it actually spelled F, you know, on it. If you guys ever look, it looks like CK. I don't remember. But it, yeah, but it, but it's got the the F and the Y. It, it actually says the shirt. It was on the air the whole time. Huh. Oh really? And it, said, and it looked like one of those CK shirts. Okay. Kelvin Klein, but it wasn't a Kelvin Klein. <laughs> oh, it said okay. F, and it said the other, huh. yeah. Oh, okay. It said that. I'm not going to say that yeah. here. Yeah. But that's exactly what it was. Huh. All right. So the other guy was uh, the guy uh, from Section uh, 8. Axel Rage. Axel Rage. Yeah, Axel Rage. Okay. Rage, yeah, the yeah. promoter. Yeah, Axel, that, Axel Rage, and who was the other guy? Uh, Count, uh, uh, Count, Danzig? Count Grant Danzig. Yes. Grant Danzig, okay. okay. Yeah, so that ended up being the very last job. I didn't realize that was the last show. Yeah, so you were actually on our very last job. So I was on the first and last. Wow. Yeah. I never, I I figured you guys did the show after that. No, uh, that, that, ended really? up, that ended up being the end. Uh, and again, it was uh, well. You guys were kind of going politics. periodically too. At that well, time it, was poli- it, it was it poli- was political somewhat because okay. they, they wanted you know they, they wanted us gone. A lot of people didn't like our show. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, Joe yeah. Joe was gone from the studio at that point. Yeah. Not, not blaming it on yeah. Dan because Dan yeah. was a supporter of our show. But yeah, it, yeah and he did good stuff. It, too. it was what it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that storyline that we had with Dan. I mean that was based on reality because Dan yeah. really nope. really did not want. See the, uh, wrestling toys being sold to kids. Sold to kids. So we turned what? that. Yeah. So we turned that into like a storyline. Yeah. We we would we were doing our show and all of a sudden, uh, Dan Hemi, the producer at the time, inserts a clip <laughs> of him and his buddy protesting at a Toys, toys R, R Us. Us by Lakeside Mall about what? people buying like wrestling toys and they Are, had they had really? a whole oh yeah. yeah yeah. So he just put that on air and then we started. An angle from there. Wow, I yeah, yeah, and yeah, that, that was the one the where he was dragging the uh, somebody won the Stone Cold Steve Austin figure. Well, maybe for that's what I, well, maybe that's where I'm thinking that, that yeah. the truck thing because yeah. I remember there's but to me for some reason I remember it was supposed to be like somebody got hit by a truck. That's why that's what I'm, I'm trying to. Picture. Oh, I think it was. We did have it another. Seems, it seems like, yeah, we seems did like that's what I'm thinking of. That's what I'm thinking of. Else, yeah, I don't I don't even remember what that was, but we did do something else like that. That that's the thing I. I think the 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 thing with the figure in the back, I remember that. But the other one, I remember was something that was filmed. It was supposed to be live, but it was actually filmed earlier because you could yeah, tell it was sunny out. Yeah, it was sunny out. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what it was. So was that the that wasn't our very last show though, was it? Was that was that on our very last show that we did? Too? No, no. Our, our last show was the interview was that, with okay. with the two indie guys. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, because you were gonna you were bringing them in to like rough us up or something. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 what it was is that Rock, Rock (laughs) said to come to the show, onto the show, I didn't know, he he wasn't even on the show anymore. Oh, yeah. So, he showed up, and then I thought he could see the show, and he kept calling, oh, okay, kept calling them out, and then they called them out to come to the next Section 8 show, and they never showed up. That turned out to be a really good interview after everybody got their chest huffing and puffing out of the way, you know? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, because, yeah, because what I did is I showed up, uh, what, about five, ten minutes into the show or something like that. Yeah. I think yeah, I showed that yeah, right. So. You guys, yeah, right. you guys didn't know what we're there Mm-mm. right for. Yeah, so that that one so legit. Then, you guys didn't know right. what was going I mean, on. You're every, like, what? Oh, no, a lot much. of times, a lot of times with people. I mean, I mean, li- literally. I mean, I said it in the beginning. We literally had an open door policy, so <laughs> anybody could really show up anytime mm-hmm. they wanted. Yeah, pretty and, much uh, everything we did was a was a shoot, like a mm-hmm. you know improv, yeah, a live yeah. reaction. Not not a lot of it was script. So not much at all. Going back a little bit, getting away from the job hour. Um, so when did you start using the uh, most hated man in Michigan moniker, <laughs> and uh, where did that come from? That came from um, what happened was 
I had uh, on my website that I had the um, wrestling awards, independent wrestling awards. And what I had was I announced the winners on the on one of my shows. And during that show, I had um, DBA and Sean Smiley. They came on the show to promote XICW. And while they were doing the show, they were whatever. You know, we're, like I said, we're all young and dumb. And as I'm announcing the winners, they said, who the F is this? Who's that? On the air. Hmm. But the actual words. They, and I told them, I'm like, dude, you can't say that on the air. First time I just shrugged it off. Two minutes later, says it twice. That's three times I'm sitting here. Oh, man. FCC, here we go. I'm thinking, that's $30,000 right there. If, if anyone's actually listening and calls it in. And then he says it two more times. And then I, I was already just mad, you know. So we get done with the show. The following week, I come on the show, and I've got Rhino. And I've, uh, Rhino's on the phone, and I have A.T. Huck. And I make an announcement online, too, saying I'm, gonna, I'm going to make an announcement regarding things for the show. And what I did was I said that I would no longer have DBA or XICW spoken about or any, any guys that work for XICW on my show ever again for disrespecting me, unless he came and apologized to me. Mm. So that's where I got that. Because all of a sudden, a lot of guys wouldn't come on the show. They were like, don't, they were told, I, I, from what I was told, it was told that don't come on, don't go on the Sean show. Don't go on the cue ball show. Or you'll be blacklisted or won't, won't work first. That's what I was told. I don't really know. Um, so, we used, you know how you used to always have like a UPS truck, you know, drop, you guys remember how the road was right next to the window? Yeah. And one time they had a speed bump that drove by. And Mojo and Ryan, we were sitting there, and it made this loud noise because the guy didn't shut his door. So we, I thought it was a gunshot. <laughs> so, so I was like, "Are we getting shot at?" You know, and this is like a week later. So that's where I came up with the most hated man in Michigan. Okay, that's where that came from. Obviously, we patched. You know, yeah. Things. I mean, yeah. other than me running from a, a, a promotion because I thought I was going to get stabbed. Um, and Truth Martini saved me. You know, he's like, dude, it's not worth it. You know, like I said, we were all young, dumb, and stupid, you know. Mm -hmm. I had a chip on my shoulder. He had a chip on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. He caught it as, a, as, as an issue where I wasn't going to promote him, which not saying that I was or wasn't going to help him because I did an interview on, on my podcast uh, back in February where he said that <laughs> even though I didn't have the calls, everyone in the independent scene was talking about my show what angle can they go on? Can they get on the show? What they're going to do on the show to promote the promoter themselves, everything yeah. else. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I just figured that you guys want to come on the air. Cool. Talk. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that everybody was actually talking about it because like I said, I didn't have phone calls. I didn't think anyone really listened. So really in a way it was like just me talking in the microphone with a couple of guys, you know, and seeing if anyone listened. That was it. Kind of like we're doing now, yeah. eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. You know, it, it's just like, you know, at, at that time, it, it was basically, at that time, too, uh, the station had just gotten online on web radio. Um, so, I'm going to steal your water here. No, go ahead. Um, so we were actually online. We started broadcasting online at that time. And then I had, you know, some issues with some guy over in Europe or whatever because of his stuff. Um, other than that, um, yeah, that's... Okay. Cue ball is global. So what? So, <laughs> so what? Uh, what led to you you being done with WPON and the, and the well, radio show? Well, because um, now uh, what what happened was is that I was getting postponed for Crazy L doing a live remote at the car show in Lake Orion, downtown Lake Orion. I oh. came in there and wasn't even told. Oh, I show up huh. and all of a sudden they're like, "You're not on the air this week." Really? Why? Oh, because Crazy L is doing the thing. Or uh, um, Jimmy Jams, or one of the two, was doing the thing from four to seven o'clock. Yeah, Jimmy Jams. Yeah, I think I remember that. He's guy. still there. Oh, really? Yeah, good for him. For real? And and, <laughs> wow. and I'm like, I came and I'm like, I'm getting postponed. Really? Well, more people will listen to this. What? <laughs> uh, luckily, I I, I I had a guest that was supposed to call in from WCW at the time. Really? Because we had we had this little thing where um, Ryan, who came, when he came on the show. He was he used a connection through the independence to uh, for WCW for was it Time Warner or whatever. So we were able to get WCW 
to have we had uh, a wrestler on once a month for the pay per views. We got merchandise and tickets if they were nearby. We got that for like five, five, six months. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the wrestlers, well, uh, his dad doesn't work now, but Sean Smiley's <laughs> father worked for Time Warner, and he was a referee for oh, XICW. Okay. All right. So because of that connection, that's how we got WCW. So we had a contract with WCW. Right, until they, you until got they all were those done. t-shirts and all that? Yeah, that's how I got oh, all the okay. t-shirts. Yeah, yeah I got yeah, the t-shirts right. and I had the, the, the tickets yeah. for, for the palace. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that's, you know. Uh, but, but what happened was, is that happened, and during the time... Um, you guys remember, remember uh, Domitsky and Doyle that used to be on 97.1, right? Yes. Yeah, they yeah. had like the red, they had uh, um, Jay the Cable guy who's now uh, you know, Eddie Venom and um, oh, I can't think of the other wrestler right off the top of my head. But they used to both go on there all the time. And Rudy, what's funny, he was their phone screener. He actually used to listen to our show while he was phone screening. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing that, that we found out like Rudy listens to our, was listening to our show while he was doing phone screening. And he also had a show on uh, Saturday nights uh, on 97.1. So Mojo and Ryan would go on there, even though they were contractually obligated to WPON. I didn't go on, they did. So they were kind of cross-promoting the shows. And we ended up having where uh, Lee, who was a producer, and Mojo have a wrestling match at the intermission of the uh, brawl at the hall at St. Andrew's Hall in 2000. <laughs> and that was Saturday during the... During the um, Rudy's show, so he was doing play by play on it. Sadly, there's no; it was not on the videotape, but it did happen because there's pictures and stuff to see okay. who who would happen because they had like a street fight at ninety seven one. Mm. Well, due to the connections with Rudy DeSantis, um, Ryan actually talked to the um, program director at ninety seven one. At that time, he had heard about our show, got praise from Rudy and stuff. We literally had a contract, okay, for ninety seven one. But we were still on the air. We, you know, okay, we could leave. Yeah. So we were sitting there like we're we're gonna quit. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're done. We're, we're getting screwed over by the radio station. I owed them some money. That's why I made that comment about you know if I went back there, ha ha. So I could, you know, <laughs> okay. um. So we got off the air so that uh, we just literally that day it was it was a we all just decided. They're like, we're done doing this. We're getting screwed over by the station. We've gotten, uh, we were supposed to do a live remote at the the one show, and we couldn't do it because we didn't have the equipment. They didn't give us the equipment and stuff. And we got delayed so many times, told, well, you're not going to be on, but I still have to pay. Look, why do we have to pay if you delayed us and didn't tell us until the day of? Yeah. You know, why should we still have to pay that? So we decided uh, Mojo called his mom on the air. I called my mom on the air and told her, we're done. <laughs> we're <laughs> off the air. Oh, okay. And of course, that's the day when we get all the phone calls finally. Last show. <laughs> oh, but everyone thought oh. it was a gimmick. The next week, all of a sudden, music. The phone's lit up there. What's going on with the show? The show's not on. Hmm. Oh, th- they just took a week off. No. The following week, phone's lit up at 6.01. Where's the show? The show's literally off the air. They quit. Station manager didn't even know until that weekend huh. that we had quit mm. on the air. So they just played music. We weren't going to mm. just up and quit, you know, in the middle of the show. We just announced to everyone, we're off the air, go to the website, da da da. We're just going to start, you know, maybe we'll do it online. So the whole thing with the contract, all we had to do was go in there, schedule, and sign. So we had a this deal is for, for 97.1. For 97.1. We had, so we had a deal on the weekend, just a weekend show for like two hours, probably like on Sunday or something. Really, no one listens, but whatever, because the Riff had their show. George Cannon's show used to come on Sunday. <laughs> and, 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 also, right. and also, you got to think, remember Dave Meltzer before, I think it was WrestleMania 23 or something, or, or one of WrestleManias? From, uh, he was brought, it was in Houston, Texas, and they were on 97.1, and they saw the ratings on that. No, so yeah, he, I don't remember. Yeah, it was on like it was on the night before WrestleMania when it was in Houston in two thousand or two thousand, maybe okay. it's ninety nine or two thousand something like that. Okay, he was on for two hours. They had the Wrestling Observer Live, Dave Meltzer, um, day before WrestleMania. It was on for a couple hours, like two hours. I called in because uh, I remember I called in and told him like, why don't you come to the Silverdome? We'll count all the seats. The whole seat debacle. <laughs> Oh, with him claiming that yeah, that, not yeah, the fans, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah what a tool. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I it's like yeah, did, and, you, and did that, you count them? 
Dave. Yeah. I mean, and, and what's funny? <laughs> what's funny too? Speaking of Dave Meltzer, is that I brought that up on the air. Okay, on mine. There was a, if you guys if you could find the old archives. There was an archive. There's a thread on the Wrestling Observer website between me and Meltzer. That's yeah. where that's where me and Meltzer I got into it with him. Okay. There's literally people that had listened to my show and went on to his thread on his uh, forum page talking about it. And Meltzer brought it up on one show about a, he said, a station from Detroit, da da da, about, you know. Mm-hmm. But that literally was like real. That happened there. Mm-hmm. But the whole thing with 97 1 was we went off the air and we're like, well, let's get in there for a contract. Let's see if, it, if he still wants to do it. Well, in between the time that we got off the air uh, in Dallas, Texas, there was a radio show that did the Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake death prank, Kramer and Twitch. Yeah, I don't okay? know. I remember the name. Yeah, Kramer them, and Twitch. But... They, then they ended up, they got fired over the prank and ended up going to 97.1. Because of them going to 97.1, it was uh, Lieberman, is who the program director was at that time. Our contract was gone. <laughs> oh, okay. So... They went on the air for the, you know, like I said, I didn't really know what was in the whole contract. All I know is that we had to go in there, sign it. There was a contract waiting there, but okay. we didn't know if we were getting paid for it, if we had to pay for it, sponsors, whatever it was. I wasn't part of the negotiation. I was just told that it was legit. We saw a contract, legit. There was okay. a contract for something on the weekend. And then because of that, he kept trying to, Ryan kept trying to contact Lieberman, and then Lieberman's like, no. Uh, you know, we're done. You know, oh, we're, I, I don't want your show anymore. Oh. And then all of a sudden, Kramer and Twitch. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so that, that was it. That, that was that, that, that was it that for that. But then, then we just decided to <clears throat> just uh, start our own online radio network. So we started okay. the Torn Radio, which is the online radio network, and we just broadcast there, and then we had different shows. It's basically what podcasting is now. Yeah. Because you got to think, we were doing podcasting in 99, mm-hmm. where i take the shows, record it, and then put it on, you'd have to, Download real player or, yeah, sure. or yeah. Winamp or whatever to yeah. listen to it. So <laughs> we were, yeah. So we were, <laughs> yeah. Doing, yeah, yeah. That, it, it was it knocks the horse's ass or whatever, whatever the saying was that it used to the donkey's butt. That's what it was. Um, the cat's meow. Yeah, so, yeah. Whatever it was. <laughs> so, 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 how, that, so how we did, did that. We did we did the show for about another year until Ryan graduated high school, like I said, <laughs> and then um, he went to college. Okay. He went to college, and then. Um, we had did it so it was, uh, into 2000, okay. 2002. All right. And then we did a reunion show in 2003. All right. And then that was it. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about this. Uh, we're running a little bit low on time, but I want to get to this for sure. Uh, and then I might go back. But um, so uh, tell us about the deal with the Jim Cornette Santino. Oh, yeah. Video. That, this, that video. this was how many years ago? Yeah, you this was This that. was four years ago. Four years ago already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was. I forgot about that. That, <laughs> that was lucky. Lucky to get that footage mm-hmm. because I just happened to be thirsty and decided I'm going to go up to the roof to get my fago and ran into that entire scene that has been seen all over the planet. Yeah. All because I had two, you know, of course, everyone got to see what shoes I was wearing, you know, in the video. <laughs> Because I didn't want to be seen, you know, I was trying to get the audio, and I had two crappy phones. But well, I was, set I, this up. Who who are we talking about with well, well, Santino? Well, yeah, 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 what, what happened was, it was at a, the yeah, XICW. Yeah, it was uh, the XICW. They had a uh, a show at Kobo, the first time that they uh, an independent show had been at Kobo in like thirty years. Um, obviously, used to have big time wrestling that um, Malcolm Monroe, the second's father, was a part of. You know, the Sheik and stuff. Yeah, they had Kobo. international yeah. wrestling there. Exactly. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah. So he was able to get Kobo. And so they signed up. You know, they were supposed to have ICP, and that didn't work out. But they had Jim Cornette mm-hmm. and Santino. And Santino and Cornette, was it like five years earlier, had a disagreement at OVW well, or something Did Cornette like slap him? Yeah. yeah, he slapped him. Yeah. Back so, in so, so Santino was training through Jim Cornette's Ohio Valley yeah, Wrestling Company. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Screwed something up in the ring. I remember what it was. He, it, he, it, it was an angle he, or something. He was or, sitting outside of the ring. They were trying to get somebody yeah. over as a monster heel. He was supposed to act like he was scared of this guy sitting out at ringside. Didn't sell it and or he something. laughed or smiled or laughed or something. Oh, that figures. So Cornette flipped out and like slapped him backstage. Mm-hmm. Good. He deserved it. That's what it More, uh, more that, comedy that's it than wrestling. Sets up. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, so what happened was they, they were there and they had been stayed there separate ways or whatever. I, 
I drove all the way up. I drove literally. I drove 19 straight. Uh, yeah, a little over 19 straight hours straight up with a referee from Florida because one of the referees that was going to work it. I'm like, hey, if you're going up there, you know, to work it, don't get a plane ticket. Get a plane ticket down. Give me some gas money. We'll drive straight up. So I dropped him off, picked him up in Gainesville, and drove him up there. So you know, had a little road trip. And yeah, I, I went to the show, and it was. I think it was. It was in between the opening show. They had like the pre-show thing, and then they had their their uh, uh, meet and greet, and then they had the regular show. And so I was there, talking to some of the guys, uh, and then I decided I'm going to go get something to drink. So I started going outside to drink, and um, Cornette was walking. What was walking one way? Yeah, no, he was walking. I I passed Cornette. Is what happened. I'm walking. I realized there's Cornette. Didn't say anything to him. I'm like, I'm not going to bother. And Santino was walking from like the uh, whatever the uh, deli or whatever it was. And then he just happened to run into each other. And I heard, you know, I just heard like a small brief thing. I thought maybe they were going, hey, what's going on? Because to be honest, I didn't know the whole OVW beat. Oh, you didn't know it at the time. No, I didn't know it. No, I didn't know it at all. (laughs) Okay. And then I I knew it from them yelling at each other is what it was. So I I go around and, you know, I'm at the elevator and I hear yelling. I'm like, so I go out and I'm like, there might be a fight. And I'm like, I've got 20% battery on my phone. Damn it. All right. Well, I'm going to go hide behind and I'm going to get the audio. So I, that's why it was on the feet. And, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I walked far enough away so that I could get video. And then Cornette's like, hey, guys, look, this guy wants me to hit him. And I'm like, oh, he wants video now. <laughs> so, yeah. so then, you know, I, I put Facebook Live on. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, what is going on? Nobody knew what was going on. And then people started realizing Cornette and Santino. <laughs> and, you know, during that time, I, I recorded the whole thing. And, and I had my other phone where I, I had um, the parts before. So, because I had two phones, because both my phones, they couldn't charge for crap. So I, you know, <laughs> so I had the one phone and then the other phone, I had more memory. So I, I did the, you know, Facebook Live. So I go charge my phones after that whole me- melee. And. I put my phones in my car for like half an hour and then I go back out, grab my phones, you know, and I was just like, I kept telling them when I got on on video, I turned my phone on and my phone died because of emails, phone calls, text messages. They're like, dude, you're on pro wrestling illustrated. I'm like, what? (laughs) For what? They're like your video. I'm like my video. I'm like, Oh yeah. (laughs) Because I did it. I did it on Facebook live Mm. on the, the, I call the kayfabe group. There's, 40,000 members in there. Mm-hmm. So people are trying to share it, do whatever they can. They're saving it, mm-hmm. putting it on, you know. I had a uh, podcast contacting me. I, I had uh, one of the guys from Slam there. He's like, hey, can I use your video? Slam.ca. Yeah. Can, can, <laughs> I, can I use your video? And he's like, I was like, yeah, that's sure. He's like, well, here, come to the table, and I'll give you an autograph. Da, da, da. I'm like, I don't want it. <laughs> oh, no, he, he's like, well, I'll give you an autograph of Petey Williams. I'm like, dude, I ring announced his second official ever match. I don't need his autograph. I'm fine. Just yeah. put my name on it. Right. Race Beamer got, got knocked out by him, too. Yeah. At, uh, the, at Levi's show. Yeah, with an indie punch. <laughs> oh, the TWX? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. TWX. Yeah. <laughs> so how many people would you say? Actually, you know what? We're, we are running low on time. Um, do you have anything that you want to get to? I got some no. other questions, but I'm not going to get to them. No, I'm, think. no uh, I'm just glad. I'm glad you came back into the town and we're able to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Was, like I said in the beginning, you know, we've, we've had the other two guys on and we had, the, we got their story. So I'm glad that we finally got, did, got part of your story. Did, anyway, did, did you think um, you were going to get two hours out of me almost? Uh, probably not. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, we got I to, we would normally yeah. we go to, I mean, I figured we could. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, normally we kind of cut it off at, at an hour and a half, but, uh, you know, I still had almost a, a whole page to go, so I was <laughs> yeah. like, "Oh, we can easily get two hours," and I still got half a page to go. But, uh-huh. uh, but yeah, so um, maybe we do a call in some other time. You yeah, know? we can do that. We yeah. Do that. Um, let me see if there's anything like pertinent that I really want want to get to. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think we really have time. Uh, just yeah. plug what you're doing now. Well, well what I do, I, I do a podcast. You can hear that. I'll media outlets uh it's called shooting the ropes right now what it is it's it's interviews with guys that wrestled in the 90s in the state of michigan independent wrestling you know yeah uh, a, a lot of guys that don't do interviews a lot of uh stories that you haven't heard um 
when I go to upload one with the Cold Brothers, you're going to want to listen because I only did a one parter with these guys. Okay, I I did one part, not the finish. Didn't finish it off. We did almost three hours, and we weren't even a, a quarter done with it. Really? But it's shooting the ropes. You can hear it on iTunes. You can hear it on you know all all of them. You know Amazon and stuff Is like that. Is that where you interviewed okay. uh, Dave Brzezinski from Detroit or not Brzezinski the the manager? I can't remember his name. Drazen. Yeah. Dave Drazen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that was yep. a good interview. Yep. Yeah, yep. check them out. Yep, had, had yeah. him on there. I got Mickey Doyle as well, but uh, you've got that also. Uh, if you Irish Mickey Doyle, yes, and then also um, I've got a web page. It's a uh, Michigan Wrestling Flashback. It's got stuff from the fifties, sixties, twenties, eighties, nineties of yeah. uh, independent wrestling with videos and stuff. So go ahead and check those out. Okay, cool, excellent. Well, uh, yeah, thank you very much for for being here. Well, thanks for um, having me on, guys. Yeah, I like. Like we said, I mean, we had had this plan, but uh, it just worked out better that yeah. you got to be up here and it, mm-hmm. the first show. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to do part two, I guess, and, over the phone or something or <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, Zoom or whatever it is. Right. Or, uh, you know, if we have somebody else in here that we can have you on Zoom for or something, mm-hmm. we'll figure something out. Mm-hmm. But uh, Grace Beamer, thank you uh, for being here You're as here. always. And uh, good job, Mad Dog. Thank you. And, Excellent uh, as usual. Thank you. Yeah, and, I had uh, fun, guys. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks. <laughs> Good job, uh, Q-Ball. Thank you. So, uh, as always, people just check the ONTV page. Actually, you know what? We never do post it on the ONTV page. Forget I said <laughs> that. Uh, go to the Butch. Actually, you know what? I changed that now. We are go on the to... ONTV page. Or the Butch Blood. No, page. no. I'm, I'm saying we. I don't normally advertise it on there though, oh. before it comes up. <laughs> so, uh, go to the Wrestling Tonight podcast Facebook page. It used to be the Butch Blood page. Uh, for future updates to see. Oh, we got a Wrestling Tonight podcast page now? Yeah. Oh, I sweet. just changed it. I just changed my, my old one. Don't, oh, okay. Anyway. Don't you love technology? <laughs> I love it. So uh, if anybody wants to know when our next show is, check it out. Thanks again, everybody, for checking it out. And uh, we'll see everyone next time. Have a good day. You're, you're- So if it's real or fake